Yeah, hello teachers. Good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Uh, and welcome to our uh, session for today no, on expectations, uh, standards, instrument and preparation for online observations, okay? Um, teachers, bago tayo mag-start, uh, I'd like to first ask, no, uh, please do check my audio and my uh, ano, uh, video. If my video is clear, um, you can clearly see me and you can clearly hear me. Okay, kasi mamaya po, no, ang dal-dal ko na pala, tas wala pa pala pumapasok na audio. So please do confirm no, if I have audio already. Yeah, I'll be waiting in the live chat, teachers. Um, yan, bago po tayo mag-start. Clear po. Yan. Okay, yan. May nag-confirm na. Clear na. Okay, so good to go na tayo, teachers. So welcome, teachers. No? Good afternoon sa ating lahat. Uh, I know it's a, it's a holiday. Uh, at uh, dapat po nagpamasagpapay nga po tayo. No? Pero... Uh, nagkataon lang teachers no na ito lang yung schedule natin na nahanap at na set no for this session this is actually no uh, was set as uh, a complete walkthrough on uh, google slides no dapat ako yung mag-handle ng session for today uh, to give you a walkthrough on google slides or how to use google slides no but uh, just last week no uh, during our webinar uh, i think that was uh, like our last saturday webinar during the lightning talks okay? uh, madami sa audience natin or sa community ang nag express na merong konting ka ba, may konting confusion at merong mga katanungan tungkol sa uh, classroom observation or sa online classroom observations. And natural lang yung teachers kasi syempre, uh, kahit po sanay na tayo sa classroom observations, no? Um, definitely there's some there are something new, no? Um, and we'll be see that will be uh, knowing them, no? At malalaman natin kung ano yung mga bago to this year tungkol sa classroom observation kasi online to. So iba yung protocols, no? Uh, so paano yung for example kapag uh, paano kayo observe sa video conferencing uh, paano yung mga naka-printed modules ano yung magiging observation na uh, ano na to, uh, protocols natin ano at sa marami pang yung mga katanungan no uh, and teachers no i hope i could give you the answer kaya lang uh, iba rin kasi yung context no, no? Dah dahil nasa private school po ako uh, iba yung uh, observation protocols namin actually nag-start na kami ng observation okay um, kaya mas minarapat namin para mas ma-contextualize po talaga natin at mabigyan po talaga kayo ng, ano, ng kalinawan tungkol sa classroom observation, sa online classroom observation. Okay? At lahat ng mga katanungan nyo po mamaya. No? Uh, Nag-invite po kami ng speaker from the DepEd. Okay, papakilala ko po sa kanya. Uh, siya sa inyo mamaya. No? Okay? Ngayon teachers, bago tayo mag-start siguro, um, I'd like to um, honor you no, by uh, doing our usual shout-out. No? Let's uh, do a very, very quick shout-out for uh, our uh, KTS family no nandito naman po ang dami na namang mga familiar names although uh, na nakikita ko no ang dami ring mga bago okay mga bago sa community no um, so uh, let's let's do a very quick shout out no miss uh, please put your name okay? if you're not using your uh, official name sa user account niyo please put your name niyo sa greeting so i could uh, uh, greet you properly so we have uh, miss Jen Ferrer uh, from Dagupan Pangasinan uh, very ano rin, no? uh, Suki, Miss Jen. Hello, Miss Jen. Um, Sir uh, Gerwin Layosa from uh, Makabalan Elementary School, Cagayan de Oro City. No, Cagayan de Oro. No, sana makarating kami dyan. Uh, Miss Diana Marie Tiaga from uh, Bacoor. Um, Cavite, no? Cavite ba ito? Ano ko? Taga ka... Ano? Ano? Uh, uh, Laguna pala. No? Malapit lang. Okay. Uh, Sir Perfecto Carbon from Academia D. De... Nasa na yun? Ba't ang bilis? Di, di Elena from Santa Rosa City, Laguna. Nako, malapit lang yata to sir sa inyo, no? Itong speaker natin. Sir Kevin C. Rowena from San Miguel, Surigao del Sur. No, Surigao del Sur. All the way from Surigao del Sur. Uh, Carlito Doringo. Ano mo kung Carino pa naghihintay si Sir Carlito, no? Uh, nakita ko, nag-comment na rin yan sa post ko kanina. Hi, Sir Carlito from Santa Rosa, Laguna. Christine uh, Canales from uh, SDO Masbate. Kimberly Fernandez from uh, National High School, SDO Pasig. Uh, Maara Lovella Pahutan from Dolores Quezon. Uh, Miss Leilani, nako, ang bilis na Miss Leilani Amigo, Marywoods Academy, Malaybalay City, Bukidon. Nako, Miss Leilani, no, ka-school ka niyo po ba si Miss Myra? Kasi si Miss Myra po, no, are recently, ano, no, uh, certified, Google Certified Educator from our training, no, from uh, the KTS training, okay? Uh, Ms. Sheena Celis from Eloilo City, Ms. Evelyn Mariano, SDO Olonga po, uh, Ms. Jennifer Castro from Mountain Province, Ms. Liberty Carion from North Hills Village Elementary School, 
North Saraga, North Sagaray, West District, North Sagaray, Bulacan. Ang haba na, Miss, ha? Um, naku, ang bilis sumakit. Miss, uh, uh, Sir RG Samora, um, from Calibo, Oklan. Naku, kainggit naman si Sir RG, no? Um, katabing-katabi lang niya ang uh, Boracay. Uh, Miss Marjorie Basig, uh, from Bicol. Uh, yo, Johanna Ampaso, from Iligan City. Sir Orlando Joven, no? Uh, from Santa Lucia High School. Okay, yeah, dami pa sir. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll be doing no <laughs> the rest of the shout out later. We'll be greeting you again later, teachers no. So para lang po mas ma maximize natin yung oras natin for today at mas uh, mapagtuon natin ang pansin natin. Kasi gagawin natin teachers ngayon, mas medyo kakaiba lang ng konting session natin for today no. So we'll be uh, of course we're going to have an input from our, uh, our our speaker from today, but at the same time we'll be ha we'll be having a longer uh, open discussion. Kasi gusto natin magkaroon ng, ano, ng bahaginan, ng sharing. I'll also be sharing my ideas about classroom observations. Uh, lilinawi natin yung mga katanungan nyo, lahat po ng mga bunga bagabag sa inyong kaisipan, ano, tukos sa online classroom observations. Para po, pagkatapos ng sessions na to, mas makakapag-focus na tayo sa mga mas, mga ibang-ibang ibang bagay, no? Kasi para hindi tayo magkaroon ng anxiety o kaya, uh, uh, ano, no, um, what you call this, uh, pagkabagabag sa sa darating na online classroom observations. Teachers, uh, please do confirm, no? Kailan po ang simula ng inyong um, online classroom observations? Kasi marami nagsabi sa akin, um, first week yata ng March, ang simula ng ating um, um, uh, classroom observations or online classroom observations. Okay? May mga nagtanong na rin, no? About, um, regarding about, paano yung mga nakaprinted module, no? Paano ang magiging uh, observation nila? Baka malinaw din natin yan mamaya. At maitanong natin sa ating speaker for today. Yan. Okay. Yan. Present po. Ako, uh, si uh, Miss Marisa Gumabong from Iloilo City. Ang ating uh, very, ano, um, um, uh, ano din, no? Suki. Okay. So we also have uh, Sir Javier, Miss uh, Ronnie Biel Gonzaga, okay. Mark Anthony Valle from Pangasinan, Miss Annalyn Aniko, uh, Miss Liberty Carion, present. Okay. Miss Diana Maritiaga from Bacoor, Cavite. Joseph Odelon, Hermitanyo from Alicia Isabella, uh, Miss Les Leslie Obina, Cabanatua Nueva Ecija, and Miss Arlene Bermundo, Division of South Cotabato. No? Lalo yun ang Miss uh, Arlene. Hi, Miss Arlene from South Cotabato. And Miss Aurene Plasio from Pandacan, Manila. Miss Lorena Duetes from National De La Paz National High School. Pao Gonzalbo from Lobo, Batangas. Okay. Cheryl Dolhao Gatal from Tagbilaran City, Bohol. And uh, Sir Chris Nilsson Asino from Tibaga na uh, SDO Makati, uh, Riz Nue Naduega, uh, Risa, ah, sorry, Riza Ag Aguedan from Eastern Samar, Flori Lee Jose from Cagayan North, SDO Cagayan, Miss Delisay no? uh, from San Lorenzo Ruiz National High School, Miss Chad Sampaga from Capital of the Philippines, Mas Bate. Yan, okay teachers, uh, we'll move on na, no? And, um, We'll uh, greet you again later. No? <laughs> Yun ang talaga yung last natin. Okay, so teachers, uh, bago tayo siguro mag-start, no, let me first introduce to you our um, speaker for today na magbabahagi sa atin no, ng, uh, ng, uh, uh, tungkol sa expectations, standards, at ano yung gagamiting instrument and uh, preparation. Yung preparation yan yung sharing natin mamaya no, for online class observations. Okay? Um, actually, we're supposed to have two speakers for today, but unfortunately, one of the speakers no, had a conflict in schedule, so he will not be able to join us today. But hopefully, we'll be uh, able to invite him again next time. Okay, so okay, so um, uh, it is my pleasure, you know, teachers, to uh, introduce to you today our um, speaker. Okay? Um, okay, our speaker for today, uh, Mr. Uh, Angelo Dadu Uy. Okay. Um, uh, is the principal two of uh, Binyan City. Okay, Binyan City uh, Senior High School, San Antonio Campus in the Division of Binyan City, uh, Laguna. He is the national top notcher of the 2018 Principals Test. So uh, he served the Department of Educational uh, Education Central Office as a Project Development Officer uh, in the Human Resource Development Division (HRDD) of the Bureau of Human Resource and Organizational Development, BHROD. He was one of the focal persons handling the results-based performance management system. So uh, teachers know the RPMS. Um, uh, he's one of the, the focal persons that developed the RPMS no, that were be used no, for the cl online classroom observation. 
He is a graduate of the Philippine Normal University, Manila, with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Mathematics for teachers. Uh, in 2007, he is a mass he's a Master of Arts in Mathematics Education, graduate of PNU Manila and University of per Perpetual Health System, Laguna. Also, he was a former uh, Simeo Rexam Scholar in 2016. So, nakita niyo naman teachers, no? Um, uh, the qualification of our speaker for today. Mr. Uy is a trainer and a facilitator in various seminars and workshops in mathematics education, human resource development, and assessment. Uh, Anatatangi Guru ng Binyan Award in 2015, and uh, the Outstanding High School Principal of DepEd Binyan City in 2020. So, teachers, no? Uh, our, our speaker for today is actually very, very a very, very busy person. Okay? Um, pero, uh, he, ano, no, he accommodated us and uh, he, he um, ano, no, uh, willingly and enthusiastically um, agreed no, to spend his time no, uh, to be with us today para makapag-share siya ng uh, kanyang mga uh, ideas ng, uh, tungkol sa uh, expectations, uh, standards, uh, instruments, and preparation for online class observation. So let's all welcome our speaker for today, um, Sir uh, Angelo Dadu Uy. Hello po, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sir Angelo, and uh, magandang magandang hapon po na sa ating, uh, sorry po, yan, sa ating lahat, no? Uh, Sir Angelo, um, siguro po bago po tayo, no? Um, sana po na ipakilala ko po kayo ng maayos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Sir Angelo, bago siguro po tayo mag-start, no? At uh, ibigay ko po sa inyo yung um, time no? to, to, to discuss uh, all the things that you have to discuss for today. Um, siguro po, um, uh, may I ask lang po siguro, ano po yung ex may expect ng mga teachers natin today? Ano yung cover natin? So, an, sort of like an overview siguro po ng session natin for today. Sige po. Uh, again, magandang magandang hapon po, Sir Franco, no? and the rest of our viewers this afternoon. Uh, I hope that you are fine no? and okay kahit na holiday po tayo ngayon ay matututo tayo about uh, online classroom observations. So, ipapresent ko po... Um, in the next hour, yung expectations, standards, instrument, and preparation for online class observations. Sir Franco, nabanggit mo kanina no, na we'll tackle kahit yung mga ano, no, class observations for those who are uh, adopting the printed modular distance learning. Actually, originally, hindi ko siya naisama sa presentation ko ngayon, but when you mentioned that earlier, ano, nailagay ko na agad sa slides ko ngayon so that uh, our viewers know will have um, a glimpse of all the facets of online classroom observation for RPMS of school year 2020-2021. So yun yung uh, uh, pag-uusapan natin ngayong uh, susunod na oras natin. So nakita niyo teachers na napaka-accommodating ni Sir Angelo. No? Um, and uh, kahit po, again, para po masagot po nating lahat, na, masagot po talaga lahat ng mga katanungan niyo teachers. No? So, uh, without uh, siguro no prolonging no Sir Angelo I'll be giving you the floor now uh, for you to uh, to start no your uh, presentation um, and for your your sharing for this afternoon okay so good luck teacher uh, sir and um, teachers enjoy and uh, have a nice afternoon uh, good luck to all of us and uh, hopefully uh, definitely no marami pong masasagot na katanungan si Sir Angelo okay uh, thank you Sir Franco no so by this time uh, again I'm Sir Jello and uh, I'm from the division of Binyan City. I'm currently a principal to of a standalone senior high school in our division. And and as mentioned by Sir Franco Kanina, I'm one. I was one of the focal persons for the results-based performance management system in the Department of Education. So ngayon ay pag-usapan natin ano nga ba ang mga ano no mga modifications for RPMS 2020-2021 now that we are facing a great pandemic na sana, no, uh, sabi ko nga kanina, we are okay and fine as we um, watch this uh, webinar uh, this afternoon. So ngayon po ay pag-uusapan natin, as I mentioned kanina, expectations, standards, instrument, and preparation for online class observation. So sinabi ko kanina, we'll tackle modifications on the RPMS, but this afternoon, we'll focus primarily on the modifications on how a teacher will be observed for uh, for this school year 2020-2021. So expectations, standards, instrument. Uh, yung preparation, um, hindi ko siya masyadong nailagay sa slides ko no? kasi sabi nga ni Sir Franco kanina ay we, uh, he invited another resource person to tackle preparation. Pero later on, uh, makakapagbigay naman po ako ng mga 
ano no, ng bits of information about how to prepare for online class observations together with Sir Franco. So kanina nga sinabanggit ko din po no, na I prepared only for the online class observation. Meaning, if you are watching right now and you're familiar with the guidelines for classroom observation, for the, for the alternative classroom observation for school year 2020-2021, meron, isa tayo, uh, meron tayong tatlong options or modes for classroom observation at isa doon yung online observation. So originally, I, uh, no, no, my presentation will revolve on option one or mode number one, but Uh, since I, ano, no, I was triggered also to share more information about classroom observation. So maya-maya pong kaunti ay uh, pag-uusapan din natin yung dalawa pang options uh, for alternative classroom observation. Okay? So first, uh, let's start th this discussion with uh, the definition no, of class observation or in RPMS we call that classroom observation. So based on the Republic Act 10.533 or what we know the K-12 law, uh, classroom observation is one gauge in ensuring quality teaching. So dito ay ano, no, uh, makikita natin kung talagang ano, no, nakakapagturo tayo ng, uh, ng may kalidad. At uh, yung classroom observation will be uh, one instrument or one gauge to ensure that na kahit na, ano, no, kahit na nung bago mag-pandemic, ginagawa na natin ito, Uh, kahit uh, actually kahit pa nung ano no na iba pa yung guidelines natin or ginagawa natin mga proseso sa classroom observation ang uh, ang classroom observation is really one gauge of in ensuring quality teaching so ngayon uh, given na nasa gitna tayo ng pandemic paano kaya nagbago yung teaching learning processes paano nagbago ang konsepto ng quality teaching at paano nagbago or na modify kung paano tayo obserbahan uh, para ma-ensure itong quality teaching na ito Now, also based on the RPMS manual of 2018, uh, classroom observation is a process of providing feedback to a teacher's classroom practice. So after the classroom observation, I know that you are, ano, no, you are being, um, uh, you are being advised, uh, technically assisted by your observer uh, during a post conference. Um, yung iba nga nakakaroon pa ng pre conference, no? Uh, bago talaga magkaroon ng observation proper. So, kaya dun sa proseso na yun, ay nakakapagbigay ang observer ng, ano, no, ng feedback sa, kla, ano, sa existing classroom practices ng isang guro. At hindi lang ang observer no, ang may kakayahan at may responsibilidad na magbigay ng feedback. Also, feedback can come from the teacher himself or herself. Now, also, classroom observation encourages teachers to reflect and develop self-awareness about their own practice. So sana po no, nung nakalipas na dalawang school years natin, nung nagsimula tayo ng PPST-aligned RPMS, uh, nung school year 2018-2019 and 2019-2020, ay ano, no, nagkaroon tayo ng, ano, ng regular and consistent, constant reflection amongst ourselves and also with our peers and colleagues, with our uh, superiors. So dahil itong classroom observation ay isang ano no isang vehicle na para ang teacher po ang ma, ang bawat guro ay makapag-reflect at makapag-develop ng self-awareness. Ano kung ano man yung current practices niya, uh, ano yung maganda dito sa ginagawa ng isang guro ngayon, ano yung pwede pang i-improve no, uh, i-enhance pa ng isang guro. Yan ay ano na, nagiging uh, epekto at nagiging vehicle ng classroom observation for these reflections. Uh, and lastly, no, based on the RPMS manual, classroom observation uh, provides evidence of actual teachers' performance, their strengths, and areas of improvement. So after the classroom observation, sabi ko nga meron tayong post-conference, no? so nagkakaroon tayo ng rating for the classroom observation. At ito ay uh, yung numerical na rating na ito ay nagbibigay ng evidence for the actual teacher performance. But... Aside from that numerical, marami tayong nakukuha no, na qualitative uh, data also from observation. At, at nandiyan yung strengths natin, ano nga ba yung mga positive and good points no, na sa ginagawa natin bilang teacher in our own uh, classroom practices. And also, uh, ano no, para mabalanse, eh, ano kaya yung mga possible na areas of improvement pa na kailangan pa nating Uh, balikan, tingnan, at mag-reflect pa tayo kung paano ito ma-enhance at ma-develop. For, for, uh, uh, for us to make sure no, na talagang we are geared towards quality teaching. And um, 
sa ngayon no mas focus tayo sa kalidad ng guro at ng pagtuturo pero uh, ultimately no sana within our lifetime as ay makapag-focus din tayo kung ano ang impact ng teacher quality sa ano no sa quality ng ano ng learning outcome sa mga mag-aaral natin so ito yung ano no uh, to to cap off uh, to ano no to start the the, ano, the the discussion this afternoon al- dapat malinaw sa atin kung ano ang a definition no, or how we envision classroom observation now um i will i don't know briefly discuss the rationale for the development of the standards based classroom observation tool so we know that uh, starting school year 2018 2019 nung na introduce sa atin ang PPST or the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers diyan nagsimula no na i-align ang RPMS sa standards na ito. So may bago tayong set ng standards for teachers. Paano ito ano no i-integrate sa mga existing nating human resource systems? At isa nga sa human resource systems natin ay ang RPMS o ang Results Based Performance Management System. So ang PPST no it encompasses the teacher quality requirement of K to 12. So uh yung Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers uh, based on DepEd Order number 42 no series of 2017 uh, nung nung inadapt natin yan at inimplement nationally so it encompasses the teacher quality requirements of K to 12 and that also includes the classroom uh, the teachers classroom practices so yung yung kalidad no ng classroom practices ng mga guro ay in-encompass din ng Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers now to assess these classroom practices So for example to identify the strengths and areas uh, areas for improvement as I mentioned kanina uh, a classroom observation tool has been developed uh, based on the new set of professional standards so kaya meron na tayo ngayon ng mga tinatawag na COT so yung classroom observation tool meron tayong mga forms no na nakaakibat ng tool na yan so meron tayong uh, rating sheet meron tayong observation notes form meron tayong ano no COT rubrics kung saan natin ibinabasa yung rating natin kung uh, binabasa ng observer natin yung rating nila para sa ating mga guro now uh, this is uh, uh, this ano no this set of tools yung class ating classroom observation tool ay ano no that was uh, accurately came up with professional ano ang, ang kailangan kasi natin ay at the end ay makapag-come up tayo ng professional development program so dapat uh, ma ano no ma evaluate natin talaga na maayos yung classroom practices leading towards uh, the accurate ano no accurate provision and um uh, development of professional development programs and targeted at the specific needs of teachers so yan yung ano no yung diagram na yan na nagpapakita sa atin na, na, na nagsimula tayo sa isang set ng standards which is the PPST tapos uh, sa PPST no in-encompass nga yung ating mga uh, classroom practices and kung ano man yung ano no yung maging uh, evaluation sa atin at anong maging findings no sa ating classroom practices using the classroom observation tool yan ay basihan para makagawa ng mga professional development programs Now, uh, aside from classroom observation, I want to define online classes. So, sabi ko nga kanina no, uh, the presentation will focus more on online classroom observation, which is one of the three options for alternative classroom observation. So, kaya ano po no, uh, itong mga unang mga unang mga slides natin will focus on that. Later on, we'll try to ano to uh, discuss the other two alternative classroom observation options. Now again ano uh, online classes no or again these are part of uh, distance learning. So ano ba ang uh, online classes? So distance learning is an educational process where students receive instruction through online classes. So uh, hinahilat yung online classes being one of the ano no the the modalities, the learning delivery modalities in a distance learning. So lahat halos lahat sa atin ngayon if not all Uh, sa DepEd ay uh, nag-adhere no or nag-implement ng distance learning modalities. So may it be online, may it be the ano the modular distance learning. So yon ay mga distance learning modalities. So I highlighted online classes but aside from that, uh, students can receive instruction through video recordings, video conferencing or any other audiovisual technology medium 
It enables people to receive education without having to be physically present in a classroom. So para siyang distance learning, remote learning na magkalayo, no? magkalayo ang teacher at ang mga bata. At isa nga sa ano natin, modalities natin for distance learning is the online distance learning wherein we do online classes. Now, uh, pag pinag-usapan natin ng online classes, we have two ano no, two parang subcategories or components of uh, of an online class. So first is the synchronous learning uh, wherein it's an online or distance education that happens in real time. So ano no, pag sinabi nating online class observation, yung unang option natin or mode for alternative classroom observation, Yan ay ginagamit for this type of online classes. So pag synchronous, real-time yung learning, pwedeng mag-observe ang observers natin uh, also synchronously in the online platform. Now, uh, aside from happening in real-time, it, no, no, it is being made often with a set class schedule and required login times. Now, meanwhile, asynchronous learning, online asynchronous naman, uh, does not require real-time interaction. So instead, content is available online for students to access when it best suits their schedules and assignments are completed to deadlines. So dito naman, no, hindi siya ginagawa ng real-time, pero online pa rin siya. So pwedeng, ano, siguro, no, uh, the, the learners are inside a Google Classroom or a Schoology or any other ano, uh, learning management system na kung saan meron, meron pa rin mga ginagawa doon inside those uh, learning management systems pero hindi siya real-time at kailangan ng virtual ano, no, virtual uh, meeting na real-time then with the, ano, the teacher and the learners there. So, so ang asynchronous naman, na on, online asynchronous, ay hindi, ano, ay hindi dyan para yung online class observation natin na option number one or mode number one. So mamaya pag-usapan natin kung anong uh, alternative classroom observation naman para sa asynchronous learning. Now also, uh, other programs no, or other online, online classes can also use a hybrid learning model which includes a blend of both formats. So pwede siyang um, pure online synchronous, pwede pure online asynchronous, or pwede blended na online synchronous and online asynchronous. So yun yung online classes natin. But Again, uh, focusing more on the option number one no, or the online, the online observation, yan lang ay para sa online synchronous learning or online synchronous classes. N yan, dito na tayo ngayon sa main business natin uh, this afternoon. So, na-define natin kung anong classroom observation, ano nga bang advantages nito, at ano bang mga online, ano bang online class or online classes. Now, paano naman, uh, anong description naman natin ng online classroom observation? So, uh, sa online classes, no, nagtuturo ang teacher pag synchronous real time, pero paano ba siya oobserbahan habang ginagawa niya ang pagtuturo? So again, as I mentioned, there are three um, modes or options for alternative classroom observation. And uh, the first one is the online observation. So originally, no, ang yan ang aking focus ngayong hapon. But we'll go over option number two and option number three a little later. So yung online observation natin, uh, ayan, no, kaya hinahilet ko, no, kaya, kasi yan ang ating pag-uusapan talaga ngayong hapon. So yung online observation natin applies to teachers will adopt online synchronous learning regardless of the number of classes and learners. So as I mentioned, no, paulit-ulit, no, para mas ma, ano natin, mas maintindihan natin kung paano ito talaga ginagawa. So yung online observation applies Hello teachers, uh, ayun baka nagkaroon lang ng uh, technical problem si Sir Jello, no? okay? Um, so we'll wait for his uh, connection to be reestablished, okay? Uh, for the meantime teachers, um, maybe you have um, questions already? Okay. Hintayin lang natin teachers, na, no? Okay. Uh, teachers, um, again, if you have questions, uh, maybe you could uh, already send that question to uh, your concerns, okay? um, sharings, no? about dun sa mga nakapag, um, ano po, no? nakapag, um, 
nakapag-share, nakapag-observation na po. I think marami na po sa ating mga teachers, no? Ang na-observe na, okay? Or nakapag, uh, nag-undergo na ng observation period, okay? So, uh, do, let, let's do first, no? Um, again, um, siguro announce muna ako, no? Uh, while we're waiting for uh, Sir Angelo to go back to our stream. Baka nagkaroon lang ng problem sa internet connection. Okay? Yan, namatay daw kanyang, namatay lang po ang laptop ni Sir Angelo, no? So, mag uh, magcha-charge lang po si Sir Angelo. Wala siya na po tayo sa ating mga teachers na mat before. Um siguro po habang po tayo nagiiintay no kay Sir Angelo, uh, mag uh, announce muna po ako teachers ng ating mga um events no um for our next um uh, Saturdays no. So teachers um on um on Saturday will be having um um will be having a session with the uh, Google trainers okay so we have three Google trainers no to discuss with us um, different um, different um, uh, use no of Google for education tools para maximize po natin no yung paggamit ng Google for education tools and uh, so we'll have uh, Sir Daryl uh, S Mercado for uh, who will discuss about us um, Google Sheets and then Miss Andrea De Guzman, okay, who will be discussing to us uh, work-life balance, so how to use Google for Education tools no, to create work-life work balance. And of course, I'll be discussing. No, uh, my part will be on building your virtual classes using Google tools. Yeah. Okay. So don't miss that, teachers. No. Okay. Yeah. May mga sharing sa tayo, teachers. No, sa ating um, live chat so far. So please, this Saturday. Yes, po. This Saturday, po, Sir Javier. No. Okay. So don't miss it. Okay. Um, and then teachers for next week, uh, we'll we we have three events no lined up for all of you. No? the first one on Tuesday, we'll be having a live premiere of um of uh, setting up virtual classes. Okay, on four easy steps no uh, via my YouTube channel. On Thursday, we'll be having a uh, session on uh, using Adobe Sparks for uh, video cre creation. And our last one on no, next Saturday as we begin our March series will be starting with uh, design thinking. No? So we have an international speaker for our session on next next Saturday. So um, for the start of our March series. And again, don't forget teachers, no, nagbago po tayo ng schedule for our March series. Hindi na po tayo 10 a.m. Saturday events. No? So yung wala po last time sa ating uh, update session, ang ating pong March series will be every 2 p.m. So wag po natin kakalimutan yan. Okay? So I think Sir Angelo is already here, no? He's already uh, back, no? So we'll just wait for um, his presentation um, to uh, be uploaded once again. Okay? So we'll we'll see. Okay? We'll we'll check, po. Okay? For the meantime, teachers, um, let's uh, share, no, our ideas, our uh, experiences so far sa classroom observations. Okay? Um, uh, kung meron po tayo mga na experience na, lalo na yung mga naka-experience na po, no, ng classroom observations. Uh, this pan this ano no, uh, this 2020 kasi iba pa rin ang observation uh, modality syempre ng uh, nitong online classes no okay so let's uh, welcome back uh, sir uh, sir angelo thank you sir franco apologies to all our viewers no medyo nag shut down ng laptop ko i'm not sure no pero naka-charge naman siya uh, again apologies uh, alam ko po nangyayari din to minsan sa inyo at baka madalas na nangyayari for those who have online classes. So, ito na ang kaakibat no, ng new normal in the educational system. At unti-unti uh, naman natin na kukombat no, kung meron man mga challenges at mga difficulties tayo na, na kinakaharap. So, let us continue no, with uh, dun sa ating naiwanan kanina bago ako nalaglag sa ating ano, uh, webinar this afternoon. So, again, uh, ang unang option natin ay yung online observation. Uh, this ano no this alternative classroom observation mode is uh, the closest no to a face to face uh, setting kasi nakakausap natin yung mga bata kahit virtually so pababa diyan sa listahan na yan mas nagiging ano no mas nagiging ano mas malayo sa ano sa setup natin with the learners uh, ng face to face natin before the pandemic so again, no, I will focus first with option number one. We'll uh, go over option number two and option number three uh, before we end ano, this uh, afternoon session. So pero nakikita nyo ngayon sa screen niyo yung option number two natin or mode number two, uh, observation of a video lesson that will ano, no, be considered uh, when mode one is not possible. So pag hindi lang posible ang option number one, 
saka lang tayo pwedeng bumaba sa listahan. Pag meron na tayo agad na online synchronous class, kahit ilan mang section yan or klase, at kung ilan mang bata yan, doon agad tayo sa option number one. So kaya ano, no, uh, mas maganda sigurong gamitin yung mode na, na, na term kesa sa option. Kasi pag option parang it seems na pwedeng mamili dito sa tatlo. Pero hindi siya talaga ganun. Naka-tailor fit ang ating alternative classroom observation options sa kung anong, ano, no, kung anong learning delivery modality at setup natin in our teaching learning processes uh, na meron tayo ngayong school year 2020-2021. And uh, uh, option number three naman, yung observation of a demonstration teaching via the learning action cell, yan ay consider lamang pag hindi talaga possible yung one at saka yung two. So nakasulat din dito sa guidelines na pag ang, ang option number two ay gagamitin lamang, pag, again, pag wala kang online synchronous class, pero meron ka namang online asynchronous class. And then pag option number three, uh, again, uh, hindi ka pwede pumunta sa option number three kung possible ang one at ang one or ang two sa yo and again this will be a, uh, this um, modality this mode no or um, option for alternative classroom observation ay applicable for those teachers na nasa pure modular learning either print or digital radio based instruction and tv based instruction so kaya ano no these are modes these are not ano no these are not really options where you where in you can choose any of the options The, the three alternative classroom observations are tailored fit uh, to a certain uh, learning delivery model. So I hope that that is clear to all our viewers. Now, uh, as I mentioned kanina, pag-uusapan natin ang expectations, ang standards, at ang instruments and resources. So mamaya, bago tayo magtapos, no, uh, uh, pag-uusapan naman namin with Sir, uh, namin ni Sir Franco yung Uh, practical ano no uh, tips natin and also how to prepare uh, for a classroom observation may it be online may it be through a video lesson or through a demonstration teaching via the learning action cell so pag-usapan natin expectations standards instruments and resources but i will focus more on again option number one, which is the online observation but you can see also no You can uh, also see some ano, generic principles na applicable naman in the other alternative classroom observation modes. So pag-usapan natin kung ilan nga bang ano, no, indicators ang kailangang i-observe at i-rate at the same time pag tayo ay inobserbahan for an RPMS classroom observation. So as you can see, no, these are the seven domains of the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers or the PPST. So meron tayong domain 1 hanggang domain number 7 at yung naka-highlight no na kulay green uh, yung mga nasa ibaba ng bawat domain those are all the strands uh, for each domain. Kung bibilangin po natin lahat yan there are 37 strands no sa buong Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. Now 7 out of the 11 priority strands for RPMS uh, school year 2020-2021 are classroom observable. So itong mga kulay green na ito, yung 1.1, 1.3, 1.5, and the rest, kung bibilangin po natin yan lahat, yan ay 11. So yung mga strands no, na, na naka-highlight ng, ng kulay green, these are the 11 priority strands for this school year's RPMS. Pero pito lamang sa labing isa na yan ang classroom observable. And those are the following. Ayan, 1.1, 1.3, 1.5. 3.2, 3.4, 4.5, and uh, 5.3. So again, these are the seven classroom observable strands uh, out of the 11 for this school year's RPMS. But out of the seven, uh, only three will be subject to classroom observation. So kahit na sinasabi natin no, na in the, con in the context of PPST, uh, meron tayong seven na classroom observable for this school year, Uh, tatlo lamang yung observan sa, sa talagang observan sa classroom at bibigyan ng rating. And those are uh, strand 1.1, 3.4, and 4.5. Again, these codes no, are the codes for the strands in, uh, in the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. Now, ano nga ba yung tatlo na ito? And I hope that uh, all our, our viewers know no, and are familiar with these three um, three indicators that will be subjected to a classroom observation. So ito yon. 
So these are the classroom observable objectives with COT. So una natin is objective number one, uh, objective number five yung pangalawa, and then objective number seven yung pangatlo. And as you can see in the mapping, no, yung objective number one, pag sinabi si objective, ano yan, RPMS objective. Pero paano pag ano, sa COT indicator? So ang numbering niya, pag minap natin sa COT indicator, ay COT indicator number one. Now, objective number five is COT indicator number two. And objective number seven is COT indicator number three. So wag tayong malilito. Pag nakita natin ang rating sheet, no, nakalagay doon uh, indicator one, two, at saka three. Pero pag tinranslate natin yan into the concept of RPMS, ang numbering natin ay objective one, objective five, and objective seven. So nakikita po ninyo ngayon sa inyong screen ang mga indicators na ito or uh, RPMS objectives na ito. So for objective number one or COT indicator number one, for proficient, that's applied knowledge of content within and across curriculum teaching areas. Alam ko po, familiar na kayo dito kasi pangatlong school year na natin yan dala-dala. Bit-bit natin yung indicator na yan mula nung nagsimula tayo ng school year 2018-2019. For highly proficient, um, aligned naman no, uh, tungkol pa rin sa content knowledge within and across curriculum teaching areas. But as you can see, iba na yung, ano, no, yung level ng, uh, ng indicator na ito for highly proficient teachers. Uh, uh, for the benefit of everyone, pag sinabing uh, pro, uh, teachers using the proficient tool, uh, by default, no, uh, ginagamit yan ng teachers 1, 2, and 3 uh, in the context of DepEd. Now, for highly proficient, yan naman ay ginagamit, yung mga tools for highly proficient, yan ay ginagamit naman ng ating mga master teachers 1 to 4 by default. Okay? So, modeling naman ng effective applications of content knowledge within and across curriculum teaching areas. Now, for objective number five or COT indicator number two, ito ngayon yung isa, yung nag-iisa sa tatlong uh, nakikita nyo ngayon sa screen ninyo na bago for this school year. At ngayon pa lang natin siya masyadong ano, no, na, nabasa, na-internalize, at kailangan natin siyang i-demonstrate in our uh, classroom uh, scheduled classroom observation for RPMS. So ang for proficient, plant and deliver teaching strategies that are responsive to the special educational needs of learners in difficult circumstances, including those that are listed. Now for the highly proficient, uh, again aligned naman, kung makikita nyo yung phrasing, no? pero ang level ay higher because again this is intended for the master teachers. So evaluated with colleagues teaching strategies that are responsive to the special educational needs of learners in difficult circumstances. So, ano no, aside dyan sa mga nakalista na yan ng mga difficult circumstances, maybe we can, ano no, we can focus primarily, pero again, hindi ko sinasabi na, i, na kung may learners kayo na nasa geographic isolation or may chronic illness, ay hindi siya consider Kasi dapat naman talaga i-consider din siya in your planning and delivering of teaching strategies. Pero baka mas, ano no, mas applicable yung konteksto ng pandemic. Kasi a pandemic is also a difficult circumstance. Ano nga ba ang mga narar nararanasang challenges and difficulties or, or needs ng ating mga learners na nasa pandemic ngayon? For example, um, baka yung may, may mga materials and resources no, na kailangan sa mga learning tasks in your uh, in your uh, teaching learning process pero wala naman sa bahay nila kasi nasa bahay lang naman ng mga bata. So paano na paano tayo makakapag-respond no dun sa mga pangangailangan na yon? Again, that's only one sample. What's uh, what strategies can we plan and deliver targeting or responding to those uh, special educational needs of our learners in difficult circumstances? Uh, example is the pandemic. Now, uh, for the last of uh, COT indicator, no, the third one na uh, is a subject no to a classroom observation. That's COT indicator number three or objective number seven. This is a familiar um, indicator for all our depth ed teachers. Kasi ito ay ano, dal, bit bit din natin yan mula school year 2018 2019, katulad ng objective number one. So for COT indicator number three, that selected, develop, organize, and use appropriate teaching and learning resources, including ICT, to address learning goals. Kaya ano no, um, Sir Franco, mamaya pag nag-usap tayo regarding the ano no, the preparation, uh, nakita ko no na ang mga viewers natin also uh, for kagapay teacher support at yung mga previous sessions nyo ay 
madalas tungkol sa ICT. So baka makatulong yung mga sessions na yon in uh, for uh, to all our teachers no na maipakita or may demonstrate itong indicator na ito uh, in their own classroom observations. Now for highly proficient, again aligned naman yan, pero ito ay advised and guided colleagues in the selection, organization, development and use of appropriate teaching and learning resources including ICT to address specific learning goals. So, ayan, ito yung tatlo na i-rate, i-observe, i-rate during a classroom observation. Kaya dapat alam po natin ito, this is one of the expectations uh, na in-expect sa atin no, ng ating mga observer na maipakita itong mga indicators na ito in our, class, in our scheduled classroom observation uh, in view of the RPMS. Now, um, kanina, no, um, hindi, hindi ko, ang presentation ko hindi masyadong hiwa-hiwala yung expectations, uh, standards, sa instrument kasi uh, nag-work talaga siya ng, ano, ng hindi talaga hiwa-hiwala. So kaya kung makikita nyo po ngayon, I am now presenting an instrument. Uh, one of our instruments for classroom observation is the COT RPMS rubrics. At makikita po natin no, na this COT or class observation tool which is based on the PPST is used to assess all classroom observable indicators. At ano lang po, no, um, uh, reminder and caution lang sa ating mga viewers ngayon na ang kailangan nating tingnan o no, hanapin na material ay ito pong material na ito. May nakalagay po na in the time of the COVID-19 pandemic kasi baka po meron tayong mga makitang materials na uh, walang ganito uh, pero claiming no na dapat gamitin ngayong school year na ito so please take note na uh, you download and you use the ano the materials the correct materials for RPMS of this school year so ayan so your ratings and rate raters must use this version of the COT RPMS with uh, stating this ano this notation in the time of covid in the time of the covid-19 pandemic school year 2020-2021 now um alam po natin no na mer na pag proficient teachers teachers 1 to 3 binibigyan tayo ng rating sa bawat cot indicator from a uh, rating of 3 until a rating of 7 so uh, lowest is 3 so Meron tayong 3, may 4, may 5, may 6, may 7. The highest is 7. So pero sa kabuuan no, sa kabuuan ng konsepto ng PPST, meron kasi tayong apat na career stages. So meron tayong beginning, proficient, highly proficient, and distinguished. Uh, currently in our DepEd context, dalawa pa lang na stages yung existing na may mga teachers na gumagamit ng mga tools for those career stages. And those are proficient and highly proficient. So may ano tayo no may sham na levels tayo in the continuum of practice for the classroom observation. So sinasabi dito no it, it uh, the PPS represents a continuum of practice from level 1 to level 9 and um meron again uh, meron tayong apat na career stages at yung beginning na unang career stage natin pag yan ay ginamit na no in the long run ng ating mga beginning Mga, mga beginning teachers, level 1 to 5 ang continuum of practice na expected sa kanila. For proficient, as I mentioned, level 3 to 7. And then for highly proficient, uh, level 4 to 8. And then for our distinguished, na wala pa rin tayo mga teachers no, na gumagamit ng tool na ito, ay level 5 to 9 naman. So nakikita po natin sa ating screen na meron dun sa 9 levels, 9 levels in the continuum, continuum of practice yan ay meron din kakibat na level name. So pag sinabing nasa level 1 ka, the description for your level is not evident. So level 2, building, until level 9, which is synthesizing. And then, uh, medyo mag-move lang ako ng kaunti, uh, may level descriptions din. So meaning, if you're under level number 1, which is not evident, what is the description of your level of practice in terms of classroom observation? So, sinasabi dito, pag not evident, the teacher does not demonstrate the indicator. Pero pag naman 9, na, the, ano, no, the highest level in the continuum, continuum of practice, uh, the teacher strategically applies exceptional knowledge and understanding of the indicator to foster a teaching and learning culture that values informed feedback, critical thinking, and lifelong learning. So, that's a level 9. 
So pero ang titingnan lang po natin pag kayo ay teacher 1 to 3, level 3 hanggang level 7. So meaning kung ikaw ay teacher 3 and you are alam ko po lahat naman ng proficient teachers ay nag ano no nag-aspire na makakuha ng rating of 7 sa lahat ng indicators. So kailangan po ay ano no um ang description natin para diyan sa level na yan ay the teacher uses well connected pedagogical aspects of the indicator to create an environment that addresses individual and group learning goals. So kung may pakita natin no a uh, generally yung ating pagtuturo during that scheduled classroom observation na maayos yung connection no ng no, no ating content no ating uh, pedagogy para may pakita indicator then uh, probably no uh, we can categorize our practice into a level 7. Pag naman highly proficient ang highest po ninyo ay 8. So one level higher no than the highest level for proficient. So ito naman ay uh, dapat po no kung kayo ay master teacher sa nanonood ngayon you should have uh, you should be applying deep knowledge and understanding of the indicator discriminately to contextualize teaching and learning processes within the discipline to meet individual and group learning goals. So kung mapapansin natin merong ano no pagkakaiba talaga yung level 7 and level 8. Mas mataas ang expectation for the highest level of practice for a master teacher compared to that for uh, of the teacher 1 to 3. So may papa, pinakita ko to kasi ito din ay mga expectations no sa atin pag tayo ay inobserve as teachers. Now, um, yung COT rubric, uh, sana po meron na kayong kopya nito uh, para sa school year na ito. Again, the, with the notation in the time of the COVID-19, makikita po natin na ganito ang itsura niya. It starts with ano, no, in, an indicator. So kaya makikita natin for the rubric this school year, may tatlo lamang na indicators in that document. So yung ating indicator 1, 2, and 3, which correspond to objective 1, 5, and 7 respectively. So pag nakita natin ang rubric na sa taas ang indicator, this indicator refers to the observable practice of teachers in the classroom. So for example, indicator number one is apply knowledge of content within and across curriculum teaching areas. Ngayon, wag din masyadong magtaka kung uh, ikaw ay proficient teacher at highly proficient teacher pero nakikita mo sa COT rating sheet na parehas ang pagkaka-phrase ng indicator. Uh, diba, uh, kanina nakita natin sa objective yung applied knowledge of content para kay proficient, pagdating kay highly proficient, model dapat, no? Model effective applications. Pero pagdating talaga sa observation, ang tinitingnan ay yung application of knowledge. Kaya magkapareho ang phrasing ng indicator for the proficient and the highly proficient. Ang pinagkaiba lang, yung kung saan level titingnan yung current practice. So again, proficient level 3 to 7, highly proficient level 4 to 8. So it um, the, the language of the indicators is taken from the proficient career stage of the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. Now another part of the rubric is the level descriptions. At importante ito. Bawat nakita natin kanina yung mga level descriptions no ng 1 to 9, pero yun ay generic descriptions. Ngayon, sa bawat indicator, iba-iba yung level descriptions. So paano nga ba ang ang description of practice ng application of knowledge of content within a cross-curriculum teaching areas sa level 7 compared to a level 7 of the other indicators. So kaya iba-iba yung nakalagay na level descriptions. So level descriptions refer to the descriptions of practice for each level. Okay? So kung ikaw ay nag-aspire na proficient teacher na magkaroon ng rating of 7 para sa tatlong indicators ngayong taon, Basahin mo yung description, yung level description ng level 7 for each indicator kasi magkakaiba yung yung description na yun. Now the next part of the rubric is the features of practice. So pero bago ka bumaba dito sa features of practice, dapat malinaw sa iyo yung level descriptions kasi yung features of practice refer to illustrations of specific classroom practices at each particular level. But take note that this list of illustrations ay hindi exhaustive. Uh, may ano, mga ilang samples lang yung nilagay dito. So pwedeng may ginagawa ka na hindi nakalista dito, pero pwede pa rin i-categorize into the level description. So kaya bago ka pumunta sa features of practice, dapat maliwanag muna sa'yo ang level descriptions. Okay? 
And the last part of the rubric is clarification. So may mga ginamit na terms sa indicator, sa kadu sa level description, sa features of practice. So nakalagay sa portion na ito yung operational definitions of selected words or phrases used in the rubric. So again, there are four parts in the rubric. At sana po may document na tayong hawak nito at alam natin kung paano gamitin. Para bago tayo magpa-observe, alam natin basahin ito, intindihin, at i-apply no, in our classroom observation. Okay. Now, again, um, di ba meron tayong tatlong uh, indicators corresponding to the three RPMS objectives which need classroom observation tool rating sheet or inter-observer agreement form because these are, again, the three uh, the three objectives or indicators that will be subjected to a classroom observation. So again, yung una natin, ayan, alam na po natin yan. Hindi ko, yung, hindi ko nababasahin yung objective number one. So but again, that came from strand 1.1 1 .1, uh, of the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. Okay? Um, ito. Uh, ito na ngayon yung specific na rubric uh, para sa indicator number one. Uh, kanina na, nakita natin yung generic descriptions of our rubric. Ngayon, para sa objective number one or COT indicator number one, eto na ngayon yung level descriptions ng level three, level four, level five, level six, level seven. And I added level eight kasi eto naman yung highest for um, uh, a highly proficient teacher. Kasi magkaiba, no? Mag, nakita nyo kanina magkaiba yung picture ng, prof, ng COT rubric for a proficient sa kayong sa highly proficient. So ngayon, sa, for the purpose of presentation, nilagay ko yung level 8 kasi parehas lang naman po no, ng description for level 4, 5, 6, and 7 para sa highly proficient teachers. Okay? So kaya ibig sabihin, no, kung kayo po ay nag aspire na proficient teacher for a rating of 7 for indicator number 1, kailangan po ang inyong practice reflects this description. The teacher applies accurate, in-depth, and broad knowledge of content and pedagogy that creates a conducive learning environment that enables an in-depth and sophisticated understanding of the teaching and learning process to meet individual or group learning needs within and across curriculum teaching areas. So in, ano, no, in a nutshell, dapat ay... Ano, yung pagtuturo po natin ay dapat tama, walang bahid ng kamalian kasi sabi dapat ay accurate. Tapos dapat in-depth, meaning uh, maayos no, yung, ano, yung integration within the curriculum or within your discipline or within your learning area. Mas napapalalim nyo yung inyong topic or inyong competency sa, ano, sa loob ng inyong discipline. So pwedeng nag-integrate kayo ng ibang learning competency na related dun sa main competency for your classroom observation. And also, dapat broad. Dapat ay integrated across curriculum teaching areas. So if you're teaching a math uh, competency right now, baka pwede siyang integrate into a science competency or an English competency. So that is now making your application of your knowledge of content uh, across curriculum teaching area. So, nag-integrate ka na ngayon across. So, kaya dapat again, accurate, in-depth, and broad uh, 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 knowledge yung ina-apply natin in our uh, classroom observation para makakuha tayo ng, a rating of seven, ng rating of 7. Now, for the master teachers, no, ang rating of 8, alam ko po yan din ang ina-aspire ninyo. So, ang, ang description naman nito ay the teacher applies high level of knowledge of content and pedagogy within and across curriculum teaching areas to empower learners to acquire and apply successful learning strategies to assist in their development as independent learners. So, ngayon ay ano, no? Uh, kailangan pa rin uh, high level knowledge, dapat accurate pa rin, in the trend broad pa rin coming from the level 7, pero dapat may manifestation na ng empowerment of learners for them to become independent learners. So paano natin yun may papakita in our classroom observation? So pag napakita natin ng maayos yun at nakita na observer natin na yung mga practices natin ay nade-describe nitong level na to, then maybe we can, ano, no, we can obtain or achieve a level 8 in indicator number 1. Now, going to indicator number two, uh, which came from strand 3.4, learners in difficult circumstances. Again, that's the objective. 
Uh, our means of verification, since it, it's classroom observable, so COT rating sheet or inter-observer agreement form. And the rubric for indicator number two or objective number five for RPMS, ay ito naman. So again, this is in the document for the COT RPMS rubric. So pag level seven for, ano no, for proficient, this is your highest level, dapat may pakita nyo na you are employing extensive repertoire of strategies to create a learner-centered environment that addresses the special educational needs of the individual and group of learners in difficult circumstances. Okay, so meron dapat na repertoire of strategies. Hindi naman sinasabi na kailangan sobrang dami ng strategies. Dapat ay ano no, meron kang par applicable strategies for the identified special educational needs of your learners in difficult circumstances. And for level eight, uh, master teachers, no, uh, the teacher applies consistently effective strategies for learners in difficult circumstances to encourage them to be successful citizens within the changing local and global environments. So may mga big words na naginamit, no? Pero again, nakikita natin yung pag-jump ng, ano, no, ng description ng level from level 7 to level 8. Pag master teacher, if you're aspiring for a level 8, dapat ay consistent yung application ng strategies. And making sure na merong manifestation na ano, no, na parang the, the learners are reflecting amongst themselves at paano nila magagamit ito in the changing local and global environment. Okay? So, yan ang ating second uh, classroom observable indicator. Now, for the third, which is the last, uh, came from strand 4.5, teaching and learning resources, including ICT. That's COT indicator number three or objective number seven. And this is the exact uh, rubric no, for proficient, yung 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, tapos for highly proficient, yung 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Para naman makakuha ng 7 dito sa indicator na ito, dapat si, ano, no, si teacher ay nag integrate ng extensive and multidisciplinary learning resources, including ICT, which are appropriate and aligned with the learning goals. Again, wag, wag natin masyado isipin na pag extensive, multidisciplinary, dapat sobrang dami. So, pwede namang dalawang resources as long as those are the resources that are appropriate and aligned with the learning goals. So, dapat meron tayong teaching and learning resources and then including ICT. So, mas, mag, mas gamit ito, lalo na pag option number one or online observation, meron kayong online synchronous classes. So, alam ko marami po kayo nagagamit ng mga ICT tools and applications na ginagamit nyo kahit na hindi classroom observation. Now, for level 8, uh, the teacher contextualizes multidisciplinary and interactive learning resources, including ICT, to deepen the, the learner's understanding. So aside from extensive multidisciplinary, dapat ay interactive din yung learning resources. So nakita natin kasi nadagdag yung word na interactive comparing to level 7 no, na walang sinabi interactive. So make sure that your learning resources, kahit ilan man yan, basta appropriate and aligned with the learning goals, and dapat ay multidisciplinary and interactive yung uh, teaching and learning resources. Now, um, let's go to ano no, parang medyo na nadaanan ko na yung mga expectations. Kasi pag sinabi expectations, ano ba ang in-expect sa isang teacher na magpapa-observe? So una, dapat alam niya ang uh, mga practices niya na, 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 na magwa-warrant no, ng rating of 7 or rating of 8. Uh, kung nag-aspire nag tayo lahat na nandun tayo sa may highest level, dun sa ating position. So kung high, proficient ka man or highly proficient. So dapat may pakita mo yung mga indicators at may pakita no, mo ng, ng, ng naayon sa kung anong level yung gusto mo ma-achieve in, ano, in your classroom observation. So expectations, expectation-wise, yun yung gusto ko iparating sa mga viewers natin. Now, um... Uh, alam natin no, na sa panahon ngayon, sa school year 2020-2021, again, we are facing a pandemic. Dati, nung dalawang nakaraang taon, meron tayong required na apat no, na classroom observations for RPMS. Ngayon, meron na lamang tayong required no, na dalawang classroom observations for the entire school year. And uh, you know, uh, ratees should submit two classroom observation tool rating sheets or inter-observer uh, inter agreement forms as MOV for objectives that require such. So again, objective 1, objective 5, and objective 7 lamang yung, yung nagre-require ng either a COT rating sheet 
or an inter-observer agreement form as a means of verification. Now, uh, sabi ko may dalawang required at meron din tayong ano, no? meron tayong time frame based on the policy for this school year na kung kailan dapat matapos no yung una at yung pangalawang classroom observation. Now, as mentioned by Sir Franco kanina, may mga teachers na nagsabi na magsisimula pa lang sila ng March for classroom observation 1 and that's okay because classroom observation 1 should be done between January and March 2021. Now, for classroom observation 2, that should be between April and May 2021. Uh, sana masunod po natin ito no, para hindi tayo nangangarag pa tapos ng school year na ito kasi magtatapos tayo ng June 11 based on our current no current school calendar. So, yan ang ating time frame para sa dalawang classroom observation. So, parang ngayon, no, I'm presenting the standard. So, kanina expectations, ngayon, ito naman yung standard. Um, aside from this, as standards, meron tayong alternative classroom observation process and protocols. And let me focus on online observation first. Mamaya, tingnan natin kung mapupun uh, mapuntahan natin yung dalawa pang options or modes. So pag sinabing online observation, again, applicable for the teachers who are adopting online synchronous classes regardless of the number of classes and learners. So ang protocol natin ay ito ang ano no illustrative diagram for that protocol. So ang observers ay merong sariling ano no roles in the process, si teacher syempre meron ding sariling roles. Pero silang dalawa ay kailangan na mag-review ng rubric at indicator list as I ano no as I presented kanina para alam ng bawat isa, observer ka man o teacher ka man, paano nga ba dapat yung description ng level ng practice. Kung kuwari, nakita ko tong practice na to, saan to dapat tumugma na level description? Sa level 3 ba? Level 4? Level 5? Level 6? Level 7? Or level 8? So, kaya kailangan alam ng bawat isa ang rubric at ang indicator list. Now, um, as we go over, ano, as we go forward to the other parts of the process or the protocol, um, makikita natin na sa online observation, dapat si observer will meet with the teacher to discuss the schedule and the online platform to be used. Dati sa face-to-face, -face, schedule lang yung pinag-uusapan natin. Pero ngayong, ano, no, ngayong distance learning tayo at online distance learning at that, kailangan mapag-desisyonan din yung online platform na gagamitin. Google Meet ba? Zoom ba? MS Teams ba? So, yun ang kailangan pag-usapan ng observer at saka ng teacher. Now, uh, pag napag-usapan na yung schedule sa online platform, si teacher naman, no, pwedeng simultaneous niya gawin with the meeting no, or after the meeting, kailangan niya mag-prepare ng lesson plan and instructional materials. So kung ano man yung ginagawa niyo ngayon, kung yan ba ay weekly home learning plan, WHLP, or DLP ba yan, or learning lesson exemplar ba yan, so gagawin natin yan as part of our duties no, as, as teachers, may observation man o wala. And also your instructional materials when you're gagamitin. Now also, um, si ano si observer naman pag ano na no pag mismong observation day na kailangan yung i-access yung online platform na gagamitin or napagkasunduan nila at the scheduled online class. And uh, pag na-access na nila pareho nandun na sila sa platform na yon. So meaning real time na ngayare no. Si teacher ay magde-deliver naman ng lesson. Uh, nandun na mga bata uh, virtually no nandun sila sa platform at si observer nandun din para mag-observe ng teacher's lesson using the observation notes form and that is one of the instruments for our class observation so walang pinagbago katulad pa rin dati ng sa face to face meron pa rin tayong uh, alternative uh, meron pa rin tayong observation notes form now um pagkatapos niyan Uh, pagkatapos ng klase, no, nakapag-deliver na ng lesson si teacher, nakapag-observe na si observer. Si, si observer ay kailangan i-rate si teacher uh, gamit yung COT rating sheet. Uh, maya po ipapakita ko ang itsura ng form. Uh, and, and, and after that, kung sakali no, na, hindi, na mas madami sa isang observer, uh, dapat ano, no, gawin nila inter-observer agreement exercise. Kasi kailangan mag-usap muna sila para makarating sila sa isang uniform na set of ratings for the teacher. Pero pag mag-isa lang naman observer, wala na tayong problema sa ano, sa na, pag, na mag uusap pa no, uh, in at uh, in doing the inter-observer agreement exercise. Yung rating sheet ni observer, nung nag-iisang observer, yun na yung rating ni teacher. 
Now, after everything, no, um, si observer sa kasi teacher ay kailangan po magkaroon ng post-conference at magpo-provide ng feedback at technical advice ang observers kay teacher at pwede din namang magbigay ng feedback si teacher sa nangyari, no, sa experience niya during the online observation. So this uh, diagram uh, summarizes uh, the protocol and processes in an online observation, which is option number one or mode number one. Now let us try to ano no let ayan na medyo na huli yung ano yung animation pero yung delivery ng lesson uh, compared to face to face ngayon si teacher ay nagde-deliver ng lesson in the chosen online platform. Ah uh, isa-isa in lang na bang, na banggit ko na lahat yon no yung totality ng protocol pero ano tingnan lang natin ng mabilis isa-isa yung mga steps. So meron tayong tatlong phases no in the observation, meron tayong pre meaning before the observation, meron tayong observation proper, the second one, the second phase, and then the post-observation, which is the third phase. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned kanina, dapat sa pre-observation pa lamang ay nakapag-review na ng rubric si observer or ang observers. Uh, yung rubric dapat appropriate to the position of the teacher to be observed. So again, magkaiba ang rubric ni proficient at saka ni highly proficient. So ito yon yung katulad ng naipakita ko kanina. Now, uh, for the observers again, uh, before the observation, as I mentioned, kailangan mag-meet mag ang teacher uh, at ang observers to discuss the schedule and the online platform to be used. Para naman sa teacher, kailangan niya ring i-review no, ang COTRPMS rubric appropriate to his or her position. At kailangan niya i-plano ang lesson based on the indicator. So kailangan niya makapag-prepare ng lesson plan and the instructional materials. In the actual observation, uh, ang observers natin ay kailangang i-access ang online platform at the scheduled online class, as I mentioned kanina, and use the observation notes form to record comments and observations on the teacher's performance. At ito yung itsura ng observation notes form ngayon. So walang pinakaibang masyado sa ginagamit natin dati. Ngayon lang ay dalawa na lang itong boxes no? for the observation. Dati apat yan. Tapos ano blank sheet pa rin yung kailangan pagsulatan ng mga comments uh, on the or observation notes habang pinapanood ni observer si teacher in that online class. And take note again this form no this is the only form to be completed during the actual observation and use this to record comments while observing. Now, the teacher in the actual observation, I, as I mentioned kanina, delivered the lesson in the chosen online platform. Now, for the last phase, which is the post-observation, the observers must do individual rating. So, kung ikaw ay mag-isa, so individual naman talaga yon. Kung, kung mas, maraming, mas marami pa sa isang observers, so kailangan nyo pa rin munang mag-individual rating. So, you need to rate the teacher using the COTRPMS rubric appropriate to the teacher's position. And again, rating should be done individually. Ito ang itsura ng ating instrument for the, uh, for the rating sheet. Um, ang kulay green, no, pag pinrint natin ng color, ay para kay proficient, teachers 1 to 3. Yung namang color blue ay para kay highly proficient, so master teachers 1 to 4. And please, no, uh, do not bring this form during actual observation. So kahit na magkalayo, kay, uh, kahit, for example, mag-isa ka lang na observer, um, uh, tapos... Ang teacher nasa ibang lugar, ang mga learners nasa ibang lugar. Sana hindi natin ito masyadong ano, no, tinitignan during the, obs the actual observation kasi kailangan ng, ang hawak lang natin yung observation notes for. Okay? Uh, and then refer to your observation notes if you're an observer in rating the teacher observed. So wala na masyadong pinagkaiba sa itsura ng rating sheet natin from the past two years. So ito lang, dalawa ulit yung, ano, no, yung observation. Tapos tatlo na lamang yung nakalagay na COT indicators. So level 3 to 7 para kay proficient, level 4 to 8 para kay highly proficient. Yung NO mean, means not observed. So pag not observed, meaning hindi mo na, hindi na, hindi nakita ng observer na na-demonstrate mo yung indicator. So, uh, pero ang automatic rating niyan ay 3 pa rin, which is the lowest possible rating. So sana hindi tayo mapunta dun sa not observed kasi kailangan nating iplano yung lesson natin based on the indicators. Okay? And for the observers still in the post-observation, again, as I mentioned, pag mas maraming observers, uh, mas marami sa isang observers, you need to do your inter-observer agreement exercise 
You will discuss the rating with fellow observers. Meron ang, obs ang bawat observer may tagiisang individual na rating. Tapos pag-uusapan po nila yon at magde-decide sila into a final uniform set of rating for the teacher. And this form is the inter-observer agreement form. Nakikita nyo po na may pangalan ng observers. Tapos um, ano na, no? meron ng final rating dito. Pag-uusapan po nila yan. And uh, take note that the agreed rating is not an average. Hindi average ito ng mga individual rating ng, ng mga observers, kundi based on reason and consensual judgment. Mag-uusap sila, i i parang ide-defend no, nung, nung observer kung bakit ganit yung rating. Tapos kailangan at the end of the inter-observer agreement exercise ay uh, makapag-agree into a uniform set of rating without doing the average ha, kasi hindi po siya dapat gawing average. Nakalagay naman po ang mga directions dun sa mismong form, uh, inter-observer agreement form. And uh, step three for both the observers and the teacher during the post-observation, as I mentioned kanina, we'll do the post-conference. So please, uh, no, no, uh, the observers will meet with the teacher to discuss the results of the, of the observation, and uh, both of them, or all of them, will affix their signatures on the rating sheet or the inter-observer agreement form. And, um, yan, ito yung portion na yun. Sa baba ng rating sheet ay kailangan magkaroon ng signature. Uh, so as to indicate no, na nag-agree ang both parties in the ratings uh, indicated in the rating sheet or in the inter-observer agreement form, whichever the case applicable. Okay? Uh, to, summarize, uh, to summarize the protocol, no, kahit nakita na natin yung illustrative diagram kanina, for an online observation, ganito siya. So pag pre-observation, nandito ang role ni observer, nandito ang role ni teacher, at yung tool na kailangan para sa bawat phase. So we have the pre-observation, we have the observation proper, and we have the post observation. So ano no par ang dami nung slides natin for the protocol pero sana no ma na intindihan natin kung ano nga ba yung standard standard process, standard protocol in doing an online observation whether you're you're an observer or you're a teacher. Okay? So I hope that that helps our viewers at uh, this evening. Now, if you're a master teacher, you have ano no, you have an additional requirement for you. So, pag ikaw ay highly proficient teacher, you need a proof of attendance aside from your COT rating sheet. So, if you're uh, if you're doing online observation or mode number one, what you need to do is to invite your colleagues to sit in your online class. So, imagine ano na visualize natin no. Kung ikaw ay nasa mode number one, dapat sa mismong schedule ng klase mo, nandun ka sa online platform, nandun ang mga bata mo sa online platform, nandun ang observer mo sa online platform. But aside from that, if, if you're a master teacher, dapat meron kang inimbitahang kahit isa, no, at least one of your mentee or uh, one of your mentees or your colleagues to sit in your online class. So nandun din sila sa online platform. And then... You, you, inter, you internally agree no, kung paano kayo magkakaroon ng pirmahan ng attendance sheet uh, after the class. So pag naman ikaw ay master teacher na nasa mode number 2, ganito naman yung gagawin. Pag naman mode number 3, ganito naman. So again, I'm focusing now more of the online observation. So pero siguro ano, sige, para din sa benefit no, ng mga nasa mode number 2, pag ikaw ay master teacher na nasa observation of a video lesson, kailangan mong ibigay no, uh, yung kopya ng video lesson mo sa at least one of your colleagues or mentees na kailangan mapanood nila. And then, uh, attendance sheet ulit afterwards. So internally, paano kayo makakapag-sign attendance sheet? And please note that if you're an observer, dapat ay ma-ensure na yung colleagues or mentees view the video lesson. Kasi magkakahiwalay kayo nito eh. Hindi ito real time. Hindi ito synchronous. So, kaya kailangan lang ma-validate na napanood ng colleagues or ng mentees yung video lesson at magspirmahan ng attendance sheet. And then for mode number three, if you're doing a demonstration teaching via LAC, ito uh, naman kasi ay ano, no, LAC session intended specifically for the demo teaching. It can be done either virtually or face-to-face. -face. So kung face-to-face, -face, madali. Uh, kailangan mo lang mag-imbita mag ng colleagues na or your mentees. Again, this this slide no is applicable for master teachers only. 
mag-invite ka ng colleagues mo para umupo doon sa face-to-face lock session ninyo at magpapirma ka ng attendance afterwards. Uh, kung naman ver- uh, kung, kung naman virtual na lock session, so magkaroon na lang na internal agreement kung kailan magpipirmahan ng attendance sheet. Para maging, again, kailangan kasi ito as an additional MOV for the master teachers. Aside from the COT rating sheet, they need to provide a proof of attendance. Now, let us summarize, no? Uh, I'm done. I'm almost done with the presentation uh, for this webinar. Uh, pero as I mentioned kanina, nagdagdag ako ng ibang slides for mode number two and mode number three for the benefit of everyone. So let us, let me first summarize, no, uh, the, what we have discussed in the last hour. So for the expectations, uh, in summary, a teacher who will be observed and rated through online observation, which is mode number one, shall be able to demonstrate the three COT indicators in the delivery of the lesson. So kailangan in, our, in planning our lesson, in, in, in executing the lesson during an online class, kailangan ay may pakita natin itong tatlong indicators. Kasi kung hindi, baka not observed yung maging rating natin, magiging three lang yung ating rating for ito, automatically no, for, the, for any of the indicator or all the indicators kung hindi natin ito may, may demonstrate. And also to do that, he or she shall refer to and review the COTRPMS rubrics appropriate to his or her position. The rubrics contain the description of the levels of classroom practice in relation to the indicator. So I, again, I'm summarizing now what we have discussed uh, preview, uh, in the previous hour. So sana po maliwanag ito. Uh, ito yung expect ng observer sa atin bilang mga guru. Now in summary, the standards... A teacher who will be observed and rated through online observation shall follow the protocols and processes. So kanina ang dami yung slides natin. No? Sana naintindihan natin kung ano yung role ni observers, anong role ni teacher sa pre-observation, sa observation proper, sa kasa post-observation. At anong mga tools yung kailangang gamitin, i-accomplish uh, sa bawat phase no, ng, ano, ng observation. Ayan. And again, this is from pre-observation, observation proper to post-observation. And he or she shall be guided by the observer or observers in each step of the process. So kung may nakikinig man sa atin ngayon ng mga observers natin, mga master teachers, head teachers, or school heads, so sana po no, nakakaroon tayo ng technical assistance and guidance sa ating mga teachers uh, in all the phases of the classroom observation. And in summary, our instruments and resources are the following. We have yung pinakita ko kaninang rubric, no? the Classroom Observation Tool RPMS rubric for proficient and highly proficient teachers. We have the COT forms, the observation notes form, the rating sheets, and the inter-observer agreement forms. And hindi natin masyado na-discuss, pero ano, as, kaya sinama ko na siya as resources, the PPST resource package. So we have modules uh, which we can read. Uh, ba- bawat isang module ay para sa isang indicator. So, paano ba natin ito i-demonstrate? So, laman iyan ng ating mga modules. And to get all of these instruments and resources, uh, the link for all these materials for RPMS 2020-2021 is this link. So, bit.ly slash RPMS PPST 2020-2021. So, you can get there all the materials, the instruments, the resources, the forms, the tools that you need uh, in the in your uh, classroom observation for this school year. Whether you're in online observation or observation of a video lesson or observation of a demo teaching via the learning action center. Ayan. So, Sir Franco, I, ano, no, I finished already my original presentation, but let me have the five, siguro final five minutes to ten minutes no, for for the additional, for the for option or mode number two and mode number three. Okay? So, kanina nakita natin itong similar no, na diagram for online observation. But now, I'm I'm showing uh, all our viewers right now the protocol or the protocols and processes for mode number two, which is observation of a video lesson. So, halos same din naman yung itsura, pero kailangan nating sabihin na pag observation of a video lesson, walang real-time observation na nangyayari. Walang online platform, walang 
uh, nandun yung bata, nandun yung observers, nandun yung colleagues pag master teacher. So ngayon, pag video lesson, kailangan lang po no, na mag-agree ang observer at ang teacher kung kailan isasubmit ang video lesson. So ang video lesson kasi natin ay si teacher ay inirecord niya yung kanyang sarili na parang nag, para siyang may tutorial video na ipinapaliwanag niya yung lesson, siya lang mag-isa yung nandoon sa video. So, hindi real-time ito, hindi ito, walang kasamang bata, walang observer dun habang nagre-record siya ng video. So, yun yung dynamics, no, ng option number two or mode number two. So, uh, si, ano pa rin, no, si teacher pa rin naman magpe-prepare ng lesson at instructional materials, pero si observer... Uh, since ipapasa sa kanya no ipapasa sa kanya yung video lesson so kailangan niyang panoorin yon habang nagsusulat pa rin siya sa observation notes form si teacher ay ano no hindi na siya magde-deliver ng lesson in real time with an observer kundi ide-deliver niya ang lesson using a video recording device para siyang tutorial video and then again sub, uh, isasubmit niya no before the observers view the video lesson So magre-rate pa rin si observer after viewing the video lesson. Uh, kung multiple observers, kailangan pa rin mag-inter-observer agreement exercise at kailangan mag-post conference after that. So kailangan lang mag-internal agreement no kung kailan yung schedule of the post conference. A notes for mode number two, dapat ang video lesson ay ginamit in lesson delivery. So sinabi natin kanina, ang, video, ang, ang mode number two, yung video lesson, ay ginagamit lamang ng mga teachers na walang online synchronous pero may online asynchronous. So meaning dapat routinely no, uh, nagpo-produce nag, nag, nag ang teacher ng video para sa mga bata niya na either posted ito sa Google Classroom or pinapadala through Messenger, Facebook Messenger. So... Uh, dapat ginagamit na talaga ito in the lesson delivery. Hindi lang basta siya nag-record ng video for the purpose of RPMS. So, pero for the purpose of RPMS, kailangan may pakita niya or ma-demonstrate niya yung tatlong COT indicators. So, dapat malinaw ha, hindi lang basta nag-record tapos hindi naman pala na, na, napanood ng mga bata. Dapat ginamit siya in the lesson delivery in an online asynchronous class. So it can be a part of the supplementary materials or one of the mat learning materials for online asynchronous learning. Now also, a video lesson must be SLM-based or MELC-aligned. So dapat ay aligned to our competencies, our most essential learning competencies. Or kung, ano, no, kung, kung walang uh, particular na set of MELCs, katulad ng, I don't know kung if, if this is true for TLE or TVL classes na SLM-based sila, na ano pa rin, no? ang competencies pa rin ay na, yung nasa curriculum guide dati. Wala silang bagong set of MELCs in our, school, in our current school year. So basta SLM-based or MELC aligned. Now a teacher should use any recording device to record herself or himself while teaching a lesson, like a tutorial video. And it can be stored in a cloud or for example a Google Drive or any storage device. So pwedeng i-send ano uh, sa observer pero dapat na isend din siya sa mga bata dahil nga dapat nagamit siya in lesson delivery. So pwede siyang also uploaded to an online classroom or a learning management system. Now, for the last mode, which is mode number three, observation of a demo teaching via the learning action cell, kung nakikita nyo, same diagram, pero uh, ang modification natin dyan, si, um, si observer ay kailangang i-meet si teacher to discuss the schedule of the last session intended for the demo teaching. So, magpe-prepare pa rin si teacher ng lesson plan and instructional materials. Tapos, si, um, si teacher ay de-deliver niya yung lesson on the agreed time and location. May it be a virtual lock or a face-to-face -face lock session. So, i-deliver niya yung lesson doon. Tapos, si observer, while observing, while I uh, will record, no? Uh, his or her comments in the observation notes form. After that, magre-rate si observer kay teacher, mag-inter-observer agreement exercise kung multiple observers, tapos magkakaroon ng post-conference afterwards. Um, some, ano, no, some notes for mode number three or option number three. Uh, etong learning action cell ay support mechanism no, uh, that, uh, that is established for teachers and school leaders to have access to relevant on-demand technical and administrative advice and guidance which come in many forms, including 
professional learning communities through the learning action cell. So kaya minamaximize natin yung gamit ng learning action cell because based on the learning continuity plan of our department, based also based on Depend Order Number 12 Series of 2020, pwede natin i-maximize yung mga professional learning communities like the LAC. So kaya meron tayong mode number three. Now also, this may be the best time to use the LAC as an opportunity for the, the rate to show performance of the RPMS objectives. So doon don magde-demo no, yung teacher. Yung mga co-teachers niya, colleagues niya, ay mag-act as learners na parang face-to-face -face class siya kung kayo nag-face-to-face lab or kung virtual lab, para siyang online class. Pero again, the teachers are acting as the learners in the demo teaching. Aside from the demonstration of the objectives, pwede din itong maging opportunity no, for both the ratees and the observers to discuss collegially strategies to improve the teaching and learning processes especially in addressing the challenges in learning delivery brought by the pandemic. So pwede natin, ano, no, after the demo teaching, pwede natin pag-usapan yung mga strategies na ginamit ni teacher. Ano kaya ang pwedeng mga strategies na gamitin ko pag, sa, mga, sa mga future no, sa mga future classes ko or sa future class no observation ko. So kasi yun ang, purpose, yun ang ano, no, dynamics ng LAC. Dapat ay nagkakaroon ng collaborative discussion and sharing para ma-try out yung mga strategies for future use at makita yung impact no kung meron man doon sa mga mga nanood mga colleagues and also to the demonstration teacher now uh, i i believe this is my last slide this is the suggested flow of demonstration teaching by the learning action cell uh, this is ano no my personal suggestion on the flow so kung kayo ay nagbe-virtual or face-to-face -face lock session siguro you can start off the lock session with a presentation of the demo teachers. So kung may isa lang kay demo, teach demo teacher for the day, so i-present lang siya, sino siya, ano ang subject niya, anong grade level niya. So i-present lang siya uh, to start off the, the LAC session. Next, you can have a brief statement of purpose. Bakit nga ba natin ito ginagawa? Ano ang in-expect niyong mangyari during this day? So i-present lang siya kahit ni, ni ano no, nung observer. So what's the purpose of the LAC session? Nang, na ginagawa ngayon. And then after that, ano na, start na with the demonstration teaching proper until all teachers are done. Kung meron mang kayong dalawa or hanggang tatlo na demo teachers for the day, uh, ay ano no, sunod-sunod silang magde-demo teach with the observation of the observers. And then after that, para nga mak makita natin yung essence ng lock session, pwedeng after all the demo teaching, uh, demo teachers, Pwede tayo magkaroon ng collaborative discussion of strategies uh, that were used by the demonstration teachers. Hindi natin pag-uusapan yung demo teacher. Ang pag-uusapan natin ay yung strategies niyang ginamit. Anong, ano ba yung mga ginamit niya? Paano niya ito ginamit? At paano kaya ito natin magagamit in the future use? Kaya you can, you can cap off, no? you can end your session with a sharing of personal reflections or insights about the strategies used. Focusing on the question, how can I use it in my classes and in my future class observations? Hindi naman kailangan masyadong mahaba yung lock session no, for, the, for the demo teaching. So basta lang ma, kapag, ano kayo, makapag brief na discussion and sharing para mapanindigan natin no, yung konsepto ng lock session. At hindi lang siya basta demo teaching lang yung ginawa. Uh, for that particular lock session. Okay? Pero ano, a reminder, if you are if you are an observer, hindi itong collaborative discussion at saka itong sharing of personal reflections, hindi hindi pa ito yung post conference. Ito ay ano no, collaborative discussion and sharing yan. Pwede namang magkaroon ng one-on-one -on -one, no, yung demo teacher sa kayo observer ng ng private post conference. Uh, sila lang one on one para makausap niya no makapagbigay pa siya ng technical advice sa feedback for that teacher wag natin gawin yon yung post conference na yon dito sa lock session na merong mar na marami tayong kasam kasamahan dun sa session na yun okay and that ends my session this evening i hope that i have given ano no given um, information for all our viewers thank you sir franco
Sir Franco, are you here? Okay. Um, currently, no, Sir Franco naman ang naka-encounter ng ano, technical uh, difficulties. Uh, ayun. Um, siguro po, no, I can... I'm now looking at the comments. Ayan. So again, I hope that I have given information to all our teacher viewers right now, whether you're I don't know whether tapos na kayo sa inyong uh, first class na observation at preparing na kayo for the second or for, for those na wala pa talaga no na magsimula pa lang ng una nilang class na observation may it be your on, may it be online observation or video lesson or the demonstration teaching by the learning actions Ayan sabi dito po sa comments uh Ayan, mga ano naman po, messages of gratitude. Nag-thank you po ang iba sa atin. Uh, and I, I have, I don't know, I, I have read in the comments na sabi po ay thank you for the enlightenment. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Ayan. Ayan na si Sir Franco. Sir. Sir, Je Sir Angelo, maraming salamat po. Ano? Pasensya na po kung na-disco na. Can you hear me, teachers? Can you hear me, Sir Angelo? I can hear you, Sir Franco. Okay, so, yan. Uh, teachers, paka, Sir Angelo, no, napaka-informative ng uh, session. Sabi nga nung may nag-comment kanina actually, uh, may nag-comment kanina na mas comprehensive pa daw to dun sa na-encounter ano nila, nilang orientation on the <laughs> RPMS. So maraming malaming salamat. Actually, ako rin, Sir, no, although, Sir, ang initial ko na, ano, na reaction ay ano, no, uh, na-overwhelm ako ng konti, no, Sir Angelo. Yan. Kasi, uh, ang dami pala, ang daming very ano no, very uh, very specific, very ano um yung mga instruments are very on set, uh, yung mga rubrics. So ang daming ano siya, well ano talaga, well I think well designed yung uh, buong RPMS no. Okay? Pero sir siguro um ano po no, um teachers um this is now an open session so please uh, do indulge us with your questions. If you have questions for uh, Sir Angela no. Pero Sir Angela ako siguro um uh, ako yung Una, mga ano, siguro mga practical um, questions ko po siguro and clarifications, no? Um, uh, gaano po yung adjustment in terms of expectations? Kasi po alam naman natin, no? Di ba? Siyempre, um, as we transition to distance learning, uh, lalo na po, sir, no? Pagating doon sa objective number seven, I think, yung tungkol sa ICT, na hindi naman po lahat talaga, no? Uh, Well-versed uh, nung pumasok tayo sa pandemic, no? So, how will this uh, be ano no be um, be addressed by the observers no paano nila i-manage yung expectations um, to the teachers given na hindi nga po lahat no are well versed pagpasok sa pandemic pag sa paggamit ng ICT actually sir franco no um, in terms of the teachers mukhang ano naman uh, naka uh, i hope no i am very positive also na nakaka-adapt yung ating mga teachers sa uh, current setup natin ngayon. May mga difficulties, I know, challenges. Pero, um, for example, objective number one about content and pedagogy, ginagawa naman natin siya face-to-face. -face, uh, sa face-to-face. -face, no? uh, at ngayon, kung online, may online class ka man or nag-develop nag, nag, ka ng sarili mong video lesson or nag-demo teach ka, you can still uh, demonstrate that objective. Yung objective number five, eh, bago itong objective na ito, kaya baka marami pa rin no, na nag-internalize at, in, at iniintindi pa yung indicator. Uh, pero ito ay parang ano eh, uh, pag, uh, pag respond natin dun sa mga needs ng mga bata. May it be uh, because of the pandemic or because of the learning profile no, of our learners na ginagawa naman natin the face-to-face -face, uh, context. Sa online, sa video lesson, sa kasa demo teaching, baka may challenge kasi uh, malayo nga yung bata. No? Hindi natin alam kung nagpapakita na ba sila ng needs na, ng needs nila in an online class sa video lesson walang bata doon so how can you ano no how can a teacher uh, respond to that need so ito yung mga nuances no and dynamics na kailangan talaga uh, in the experience baka naman after the 
the first quarter of the school year in October to December of last year. Marami ng mga experience sa mga teachers natin na kaya nilang i- apply dito sa ating ano no sa ating bagong konsepto ng classroom observation. So objective number seven naman, again, gumagamit naman tayo ng teaching and learning resources kahit face to face nung sa online class. Lalo sa online class, marami ang ICT integration natin. M- mga Google Apps tayo diyan, meron tayong mga uh, tungkol sa assessment, sa content. So marami tayong mga gamit. As uh, ma- baka lang mahirapan no in the video lesson kasi nga walang bata doon nakaharap. Uh, pero alam naman natin na kung paano gumamit ng mga ICT na pwede natin ipakita din in our uh, own recorded video lesson. Sa demo teaching, kaya din natin yan gawin uh, whether it's face-to-face or virtual. Sa teachers, kaya. Sa observers, uh, baka, meron, baka same challenges din, Sir Franco. No? Na paano nga ba ako as observer mag-observe ng dynamics ng isang online class as compared to a video lesson and and to a demo teaching via the learning action cell and i and i know our division and regional offices are capacitating them so sana po ay ano no magtugma yung preparation ng teacher saka yung yung current state ng mga observers natin uh, sa pag-observe naman i think siguro sir no um yung sinabi niyo po kanina na pre observation pay uh, pace will actually yes. play a big part dito para ma-set yung mga expectations, ma-set yung, lalo na pagdating sa mga tools na gagamitin, uh, et cetera. No? So I think teachers, dapat yan isa sa mga, na, dapat natin pagtuunan din ng pansin sa mga observers natin at saka po sa mga may observe po natin. Pero Sir Jello, I really like what you said kanina do, dun, when you're talking about uh, objective number seven. Uh, ang galing na natutu- natututo na ako sa mga ano, ng, <laughs> ng uh, DepEd. Ang daming, ano, ang daming, um, uh, terms, etc. Pero what I really like what uh, Sir Jello said kanina no, was that uh, hindi po paramihan ng paggamit ng tools, no, ng resources doon sa objective number seven. So tandaan po natin siguro. Kasi baka ang idea natin ng, ng, uh, para ma-meet yung objective number seven ay damihan ko, like mga sampung tools yung gagamitin ko sa observation uh, para ma-meet ko. Hindi po, no, sabi nga ni Sir Jello kanina, which I really, really like, no? hindi po siya padami yan, no? palaliman ng paggamit. No? Sabi nga, Sir Jello, kanina, pwedeng isa lang yan, pwedeng dalawa lang yan, pero sobrang lalim at saka sobrang well-integrated into your lessons. Uh, then, that much, that's actually ano, much, a much better um, ano, targeting of objective number seven. So, yan, maraming salamat po. No? Sir, actually, gusto ko lang, i, ano, no, kung hindi nyo po nakita yung mga comments, pero uh, natutuwa lang po talaga yung mga teachers how comprehensive, uh, sobrang linaw, ng uh, discussion niyo po no uh, for this afternoon. Sabi nga nila again, uh, mas nas nas nalinawan pa sila dito uh, dun sa ibang uh, orientation. But again, teachers no, um lahat naman yung mga orientation na should help no. So yung po mga pinagdaanan niyo sa DepEd, dapat po that should also help. Ito actually yung session natin for today is a really more intimate session, no? yung talagang para mas ma-direct po yung mga questions niyo, concerns niyo uh, about this. Sir, sir, meron akong question ngayon no coming from um Miss uh, Beverly Joy um, Kuahao. Um, sir, ito po, ang tanong niya ay, Sir, what about indicator number two? How could we address to it? Yung, it actually, Sir um, Jello, no? madaming tanong po sa uh, objective number two. Indicator actually, number two pala. Actually, kaya ako din, ano, no, pa- parang uh, explicitly sinasabi ko na rin talaga na objective, uh, COT indicator number two or obje- objective five is a new indicator, no? In, is a new indicator this year. Tapos, uh, ayun nga, yung since bago siya, baka ano pa, no, it, it will take time for us to to uh, explore kung paano nga ba talaga na kapag plan and deliver ng teaching strategies responding to the special educational needs of learners in difficult circumstances. Uh, wag lang tayo masyadong malito sa, ano, no, sa makonfuse sa special educational needs. And teachers baka nagkaroon lang ano, na baka nagkaroon ulit ng technical problems. Uh, parang na, na ano kami ng technical problems for today. <laughs> anyway teachers, uh, if you again ano, you have questions, okay Sir Angelo mahing... Okay teachers for the presentation ni Sir Angelo no will ask permission. Okay pero uh, Sir mar- maraming salamat to Sir Louis Jacob uh, who's already in the chat no answering some many of your questions no. Uh, he sent me the the, the materials, na, the tools, instruments. No? Uh, we'll be curating everything and we'll be putting it in our, uh, in a folder, in a Google Drive folder. 
and we'll be sending the Google Drive folder link to all of you no via uh, kaagapay teacher support page no so please pakaintay na lang po yung teachers no uh, we'll be sending that and we'll be linking it uh, through our website and to our um, um, uh, Facebook page no so we'll be posting it siguro po tonight or tomorrow morning okay baka, baka po tomorrow morning lang para hindi niyo na masyadong isipin for tonight teachers na para makapagpahinga na po kayo okay so maraming salamat po again to Sir Louis Jacob uh, for um, uh, giving uh, giving us access uh, to the resources okay now teachers um, while we're waiting for Sir Angelo no, to go back in malamang po nagkaroon na naman siya ng problem sa kanya ano laptop so far okay uh, please do um, let us know if you have questions okay um uh, concerns no about the RPMS or uh, the classroom observation i think no ang ganda ng ginawa ni sir angelo no uh, he presented everything no the 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 this instruments expectation the standards and then he tackled all modalities no so pati po yung mga uh, will be observed in an online setup uh, you will be observed in um, in a video lesson at pati po yung mga ma-observe sa lack session no that could uh, that, that that was uh, properly addressed by Sir um, Angelo as well. Okay? Okay, yun. Dapat ang ating mga rater binibigay ang copy ng ating rubric sa, uh, sa rating ahead of time. Okay? Sir, uh, sorry. Uh, back in, sir. sir Angelo, welcome back po. No? Sir Angelo, may concern lang dito. No? May isang, uh, uh, is this a possibility na ang rater daw, dapat daw ay binibigay ang rubric ng rating ahead of time. Binibigay po ba talaga ito sa mga rating, sir? Yung uh, actually, rubric sir, ano, uh, Actually, sir, available naman ang ano ang rubrics no, uh, for, the, for the reference and guidance of both the rating and the raters. So, ano siya, public document siya. So, hindi, hindi natin kailangan maghintay no, na tayo bibigyan ng rubric kasi kailangan talaga no based on my discussion kanina kailangan both the observers and the teachers are reviewing the the rubric pre observation para alam natin kung anong level of practice yung kailangan sa ganitong indicator so yeah. ano yun yun, yun ay kailangan talaga po na hawak natin sir ano balikan ko lang yung ano sa indicator to kanina first time ko actually na ma disconnect not twice sa isang webinar dati mga once lang or talagang never so para na overwhelm din ng laptop ko sa positive na feedback ng ating mga viewers ngayong Napaka gabi. <laughs> Ayan, so balikan Sobrang, ko lang po yung yeah. Balikan ko lang sir Franco Sobrang no yung sa, ano kanina sa sa question kanina about indicator number 2. So again, ano no, I we understand na baka challenging kasi nga bago indicator siya. So siguro ang ano ang may advice ko lang no as an observer ay since ito ay strategies no responding to special educational needs of learners in difficult circumstances kailangan lang ay ano no maayos nating na profile ang ating mga bata learning styles learning needs learning difficulties at huwag natin siyang i-equate directly no na kailangan meron tayong ano meron tayong uh, learners with special needs yung uh, sped classes no kasi ito ay applicable itong uh, indicator na ito for all our learners with needs because of uh, because of them encountering the pandemic so pwede itong ano um pwede itong katulad ng nabanggit ko kanina no na if if you are a teacher making sure na you are you are instructing your students to improvise materials which are not available at their homes uh kunwari science teacher ka na may experiment ka pero wala kang walang gamit na ganito sa sa bahay ng bata uh, so pwedeng ano no meron siyang um, explicit and consistent instructions on how to improvise such material. So ano na yung agad yon strategy na agad yon to respond to the special educational needs of your learners given that there's a pandemic. Also differentiated instruction uh, is also ano no one method to to ano to demonstrate indicator number 2 nag nagdi-differentiate ka ng output ng process ng ng product uh, sa iba't ibang grupo ng learners mo in your online class or in your video lesson or in your demo teaching that's already a demonstration of indicator number 2 salamat po for that very detailed ang nakakatawa mag-express sir Angelo no uh uh, ang linaw, ang simplified. Uh, I really appreciate Sir, Sir Angelo no? kasi isa to sa mga ano eh, uh, 
uh, personally bilang isang teacher no isa to sa mga source of uh, anxiety kasi uh, just to be honest sir Angelo no uh, talagang nakaka-anxious ang uh, ang ano no ang class observation kasi kahit ano man pong sabihin natin no uh, there will be like uh, definitely no like um, judgment i judge yung performance mo etc and sometimes again um na cost talaga yan ng anxiety so maraming maraming salamat for that very very detailed um ano sir ano sir Angelo uh, for your all your answers no so teachers um let me uh, entertain some more questions okay, uh, from our audience okay? uh, baka po meron pa kayong mga katanungan Although Sir Angelo, no, sobrang lino kasi nung illustrations mo, diagrams, explanation, uh, ang daling sundan. So, hin- walang ma- I think, you know, hindi masyadong, hindi nalito ang mga teachers natin. So, uh, walang masyadong tanong. Puro thank you and uh, appreciation uh, from, ano, no, from, from, from you, sir. No? Yun, okay? So, uh, sir, I sir, sir, ano, sir Franco, I have seen one question. Eh, sige po, kung may ma-flash kayo, ayan. Ito lang po kay Sir Romel. Pwede ba gamitin to sa class observation sa pre-service? Uh, it depends, sir. Kung, uh, kasi kung pre-service ito, so mga teacher education institutions, no? I assume. So, uh, baka ano po, no? Baka pwede din naman na magamit, no? In, in, in this teacher education institutions. Angelo, kanina clarification. Although nasagot naman ng isang uh, participant natin, pero clarification lang. This um, uh, expectation standards and instrument that you presented are only applicable for the for the basic education, not for the higher education. Tama po ba, sir? Yes, uh, sir. Uh, ang, ang ano ko lang kanina, uh, dito sa tanong, sa, I don't know kung feedback or question ni Sir Romel ay pwede naman siyang ano, pwede siyang i-adapt no, ng, ng teacher education institutions if they deem na okay sa kanila or applicable sa kanila. But basically, itong, ano, no, itong broad concepts na ito at yung mga pinresent ko kanina ay ano, uh, in the basic education. So meaning from kindergarten to grade 12. Okay. Uh, sir, I, sir, may isa pang question dito. No? Pero ano siya, parang pang, pang concluding na question siya. Pero sumamaya ako na itatanong sa ito kapag wala nang ibang tanong ang ating audience. No? Um, where well, Sir Angelo, ano lang, question lang, no? um, uh, para lang, in, a, in a very practical way, um, can the teacher, okay, can the, um, if for example, during a classroom, an online classroom observation, nagkaroon ng technical problems, like uh, disconnection, kasi hindi po naiwasin, katulad po ngayon, no? uh, para yes, po yes. tayo na-disconnect sa, <laughs> sa call correct, natin correct. today. <laughs> um, how would that impact the teacher's uh, perform or uh, rating? Will, we, will it be taken against them? Will magkakaroon ba ng resetting of um, of uh, the observation uh, period or uh, paano po ba siya magpo-proceed? Actually, ano, Sir Franco, no, there's an explicit statement in the policy for RPMS 2020-2021 that, that for example, no, in an online class that a teacher, yung teacher mismo, no, naka-experience ng technical difficulties during a scheduled classroom observation, ang nakalagay sa policy natin is it should not be taken against the teacher. So meaning uh, it can uh, pwede magkaroon ng mga interventions no either you reschedule the online cl- the on the classroom observation or give the, opor- the opportunity to the teacher na mag-record na lang siya ng online class niya online class pa rin yung setup pero baka kasi perennially unstable yung ano no yung internet connectivity niya at meron lang for example, merong araw na okay yung kanyang ano, yung kanyang internet connectivity pero hindi naman niya schedule na observation. So nakalagay sa policy natin na pag uh, perennially unstable ang internet connectivity, pwedeng mag ano, pwedeng yung online class niya with the learners ay i-record niya at ipasa niya sa kanyang observer. That's that's one. And also the other the other thing na nabanggit ko kanina, pwedeng i-reschedule yung online uh, yung observation schedule. Maraming maraming salamat sir ano no. Um sir, ito po a uh, question from um uh, teacher Lourdes uh, Santa Juana, okay? Ang puna at reflection po ba ilalagay sa bahagi ng lesson plan na gagamitin sa online observation? Uh, Ma'am Lourdes, uh, depende po kasi sa ano no, uh, sa gagamitin yung lesson plan. Kasi na, ang alam ko po ang puna at reflection ay nasa uh, format natin ng DLL no ng daily lesson lag in our depth context 
Uh, baka ka, kasi po ano, ano, ang gagamitin nyo ay WHLP, yung Weekly Home Learning Plan, or Lesson Exemplar, or DLP, the Detailed Lesson Plan. So, uh, baka po kasi dun sa difference no, ng paggamit nung mga nabanggit ko, ay baka hindi siya parte nung, nung lesson plan na yon Pero, mas maganda pa rin no, na kahit na wala itong component na ito, yung puna at reflection sa inyong gagamitin na lesson plan for your classroom observation, ay maglagay pa rin tayo kasi uh, that, ano, no, that will entail uh, self-reflection na kahit ano man ang mode na ginamit mo online ka man, video lesson ba yan o demonstration teaching, ay nakalagay doon yung iyong mga reflections doon sa iyong ano, ginawang pagtuturo doon sa araw na yun. Yeah, thank you so much for ano no for uh for that sir uh, Angelo. No, sir Angelo, um um follow up din sa question ni Sir Romel Octavius Nuestro kanina about the use of um of the standards to the pre-service training. Kasi daw po sa DepEd po kasi sila nagpi-field ng kanilang mga ng mga kanilang pre uh, mga pre ano pre-service in-service training na teachers. So, uh, will that actually if apply sir or ano yun, parang consensus dapat. Ano, ano sir kasi uh, hindi pa kasi applicable yung ano no kasi yung yung tools natin ngayon di ba nabanggit ko kayo na may apat tayong career stages so, ang in the depth context ang existing natin ay yung proficient sa highly proficient yung career stage 2 and career stage 3 um we can ano no we can say na yung mga pre-service natin baka mag-fall under the beginning career stage yung career stage number 1 for which we don't have the tools yet so Pwede namang ano no, pwede namang gamitin, uh, pwede naman yung mga processes, protocols ay ma-explore natin na baka pwedeng magamit during ano no, yung demonstration teaching ng ating mga student teachers. Ganun yung tawag, ganun yung tawag sa ano I believe sa mga pre-service teachers na nasa DepEd no, na parang kinokompleto nila yung kanilang student teaching uh, before they graduate college. So baka yung ano no, yung ilang mga bagay ay map ma, ma, ma adapt natin like yung protocols pero again yung indicators kasi ay ano eh ay para kay proficient sa highly proficient so baka lang hindi masyadong mag-apply to our pre-service teachers. Saka sir baka masyadong mataas no baka it might mm -hmm. be unfair Correct. for the uh, the students to be measured and to be assessed with that kind of ano no of uh, standards okay so baka kaila baka pwedeng gawin siyang ano basis and then uh, modified no to the levels of the uh, in service training nat uh, trainees natin sir uh, ito question from miss uh, Leslie Obina um, sir how do you do observations in early childhood education ako uh, so paano kindergarten no yes. actually ano uh, the, P the PPSD kasi ay uh, yung the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers ay applicable uh, in any ano no in any specialization in any key stage or grade level so meaning uh, yung mga diniscuss ko ngayon applies to the entire basic education. May it be kindergarten, primary, intermediate, junior high, or senior high. Uh, same same policies and guidelines tayo. Pero syempre, kailangan si observer ay marunong, no? Marun uh, kunwari, siya ay observer in a kindergarten class. Alam niya na kung, kunwari, sa indicator number one, application of knowledge of content uh, within and across curriculum teaching areas, alam niya kung ano yung magwawar yung kung anong practice sa kindergarten ang magwawaran to a level 7 or a level 8 kasi ano no kunwari sinabi natin na uh, integ, uh, dapat yung content ay accurate in depth sa ka broad may ina-apply din naman natin yun sa early childhood sa kindergarten hindi nga lang ganun ang expectation for a senior high so sa kinder kaya pa rin naman nating mag-deliver ng accurate tapos in depth no yung integration within the curriculum so pwede kang mag ano no pwede kang mag uh, integrate ng competencies or i don't i don't i'm not sure about the term no being used in the kindergarten pero pwede kang mag integrate ng ng competencies within your within your kindergarten class kung learning kung anong learning period yon tapos pwede ka din naman mag integrate no sa other sub learning areas pero alam ng teacher dapat at ng observer kung ano yung extent ng integration. Hindi, hindi in-expect dito yung integration na katulad sa senior high na pwede ka mag-integrate ng, ng, ano, no, ng, ng English for academic and professional purposes, ng physical science, etc. So, kay, ano pa rin, applicable ang guidelines kahit, anong, kahit sa kindergarten man yan. As long as alam natin yung leveling 
uh, ng integration in my sample in indicator number. Sorry. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Sir Angelo. No? Okay. Nako, ang dami ng files ni Sir Angelo. <laughs> Sa ating... Uh, so, Sir, Sir Angelo, ito, uh, something to do with confidentiality naman itong question na ito. No? Um, Sir, is it okay for my school head to discuss my self-assessment with other observers? Kung meron po siguro multiple observers to, baka po yun po yung tanong niya. Actually, ano, uh, I, I believe, uh, Ma'am Florelino, yung self-assessment kasi is another term for RPM... Uh, another term inside the RPMS, no, the, inside the system. This is ano, different from a classroom observation. So, ang tanong po kasi ni Ma'am Florelli ay okay lang ba i-disclose no, or i-discuss ni school head yung self-assessment with other observers? I believe na hindi. Kasi um, uh, kung ano po yung, ano, no, yung self-assessment uh, in, the, in, your, in the objectives in the RPMS, ay dapat po ay uh, ang, may alam po niyan ay ang teacher ang nakikita lang dapat ni school head sa kanyang observer ay yung development plan. So ano bang plano uh, para ma-address ang, ang development needs no, ng, ng, uh, uh, ng isang teacher. So ang nakikita lang ng observer, ng school head, ay yung development plan but not really the raw results of self-assessment. So yun yung konsepto ng self-assessment. Pero uh, i-coconnect ko din ito sa classroom observation na pag sa observation naman, Di ba ano nag mayroong kung multiple observers kasi meron tinatawag na inter-observer agreement exercise. Kailangan talaga nilang mag-usap kung ano ang rating ko in, as a school head, kung anong rating ng isang observer no kung kuwari master teacher siya. Kay doon talaga magkakaroon ng disclosure at discussion nung rating kasi kailangan nilang magkaroon ng mag, mag come up with a uniform set of final rating. So doon talaga hindi maiiwasan no na magkaroon ng discussion and disclosure ng individual rating of of the observers. So pero pag again I I discussed I, I answered this question uh, in two ano no two 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 from yung aking answer. Una yung konsepto ng self assessment na self assessment tool and then yung konsepto ng classroom observation. So I hope that that is clear no uh, doon sa dalawang uh, answers ko for that question. Uh, maraming salamat, Sir Angelo. No? So, teachers, uh, siguro last two questions. No? Pasensya na po kayo nag-overtime tayo, but I hope that you appreciate our extension for tonight. No? Um, so, maybe last two questions. Actually, meron tayong isang last question. Uh, this is uh, medyo overall yung tanong niya, Sir. No? Medyo generalized. Okay? Uh, unless we have a very um, uh, specific question. Yan. Okay. Uh, sir, I hope that you're reading the comment section. No? Talagang yes, uh, alag umapaw sa pagkapasalamat, pagpapapuri ang ating mga teachers. No? Sir, ito po question from Sir Joseph Odelon Hermitano. No? It's, a, it's a generalized, uh, it, in a general sense, no? siguro po as a concluding ano na rin, uh, statement from you, sir. Uh, this question, uh, what greatest inspiration and advice that you may share and give to us to rise up again and to reach our, our soaring high in this COVID-19 pandemic. So ano no, I, in the context kasi ng educational system natin ngayon, paulit-ulit ko sinasabi kanina na uh, in the pan, in, uh, while we are in the pandemic, the educational system is encountering challenges, difficulties. Meron naman din tayong mga ano, meron din naman tayong mga kahit mga small wins no or big wins. Uh, in the teaching learning process in this time of the pandemic. But siguro as a school head, uh, ang masasabi ko po no, ay um, we, we, do, we do our things yung, yung kung anong in-expect sa atin no, ating mga uh, ating responsibility as a teacher. Gawin lang natin ng maayos. Uh, katulad no, kung paano natin ito ginagawang maayos din no, nung before the pandemic. Gawin natin ang trabaho natin ng maayos. Um, kasi ang uh, bawat isa sa atin ay, nag, ay we understand, as a school head, I understand na meron din tayong mga kanya-kanyang mga difficulties, challenges na kinakaharap ngayon. But if we are, if we are to collaboratively, ano, no, uh, collaboratively discuss, share, brainstorm, um, give advice, pieces of advice to each other. So lahat yan ay, ano, no, lahat ng mga difficulties and challenges na ito ay malalampasan natin with ano uh, sana with flying colors at uh, yung compassion yung concern yan lahat yung mga bagay na yan ay kailangan natin ngayon uh, hindi lang basta tayo magaling mag magturo magaling magpa ma magaling tayo during the observation kailangan ay compassionate teachers din tayo na alam natin kung 
kung kailan ang mga bata natin ay nakaka-experience ng difficulties, kailan tayo mag mag ano no mag move forward, kailan tayo mag hold back. So uh, itong mga mga skill sets na to na natututunan natin ngayon because of the pandemic dapat ay ma, ma, ma magawa pa natin mag-flourish no at ma, ma-develop pa natin para sa bagong normal talaga ay magamit natin yung mga characteristics nila. Thank you, maraming salamat Sir uh, Angelo no for uh, for for that inspiring message. So teachers, I hope that uh, you were ano no were you inspired as I was inspired by Sir Angelo no. Uh, Uh, with with napakabata ni Sir Angelo and yet uh, yung yung grabe yung uh, understanding ni Sir Angelo dito sa topic natin for today no? so Sir Angelo um, I think we will be concluding our session with that um, statement po and again we appreciate uh, your presence your sharing no with uh, with our community today uh, we'll be sending you sir no um, our, our our certificate of recognition as an as a form of appreciation Uh, for your presence today and uh, again this uh, sir angelo we can't um uh, say th- uh, um <laughs> uh, more than enough thanks no for for your presence today and for your sharing today no um sir angelo siguro ano lang um couple of um things na siguro before we ano no we say goodbye um uh, for the materials key um will be i think no um Uh, these are, as you mentioned, these are all public materials. So, teachers, kung hinahanap yung mga materials that was presented by Sir Angelo, these are all um, available uh, publicly, no? Sir, tama po ba sa DepEd uh, website po? Yeah. Okay. So, sir, maraming salamat po ulit and uh, uh, thank you for gracing uh, Kaagapay Teacher Support. Uh, our community uh, appreciates your time and your expertise in sharing uh, in this afternoon session po. Yeah. Maraming maraming salamat. Uh, teachers, thank you very let's much. give... <laughs> Let's give uh, Sir uh, Angelo uh, uh, a warm round of applause, a virtual round of applause sa ating uh, chat box. No? Sir, ang init po, ang init ng ating chat box. No? Uh, <laughs> so, punong-puno po. Sir Angelo, um, may, um, kung hindi niyo po marap, marap, mamarapatin, ano, uh, sana po ay hindi pa ito yung last natin na ano na opportunity to be with you. No? Uh, I think uh, our teachers will learn a lot from you no? uh, in different aspects. So, we'll be in communication po sana ulit no? at sana po mapagbigyan niyo po ulit kami kahit sure, po sir. sobrang busy niyo po no uh, yon so maraming maraming salamat po sir angelo so we'll um uh, say goodbye to sir angelo for now uh, and we'll be seeing him again no sana po sa kaagapay teacher support yeah thank you sir angelo thank you po okay teachers uh let's now uh, move Um, into our last ano, no, part of our uh, session for today, which is the evaluation part. So I'll be showing you now um, your uh, evaluation form. So you may um, take your um, for a while. Okay, for a while, teachers. Okay, teachers, don't forget that um, after uh, filling out the evaluation form, uh, please wait for five to seven days now for us to deliver your uh, your certificates uh, via email. Okay, so we'll be sending them uh, to your emails. No need to um, uh, access any website, Google Drives, etc. Okay, so teachers, here is your evaluation link. Before I say goodbye, uh, please do check if the link works. No, um, so that. Um, We're sure that it's working before I leave you with this uh, evaluation. Okay, so let me know in the chat box, teachers. Please do try first uh, before I close our stream for tonight. 